Not very humid. Clear skies, and believe it or not, we're lucky. That's a low wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Richmond McGee will kick it off for Texas. They won the toss. They have deferred. Mack and Amendola back for Texas Tech. Kicking into the slight breeze, about two yards deep. They're going to bring it out. Amendola, the true freshman, to the 15, to the 20, up to the 25, to the 30-yard line. Great start for Texas Tech. We do have a player down, slow to get up. But Danny Amendola, the true freshman, with an excellent kickoff return. Texas Tech offense number two overall, averaging over 515 yards. Sonny Cumbie, the senior from Snyder, Texas, just about 90 miles down the road. Sort of a combination of Cliff Kingsbury and B.J. Simmons. Yeah, Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury, in terms of film study, kind of a football guru, wants to learn as much as he can about it. And like B.J. Simmons, because he likes to push the ball downfield in the pass game. Not a bad combination of quarterbacks to be if you play at Texas Tech. Now let's see how Texas lines up. Right now they've got four on the line of scrimmage. Three linebackers within about four yards of the line. And Cumbie will put it up his first pass of the evening. Has the protection complete over the 40. Ball is loose. Still loose. Nope. Hit his shoe. It was a shoe that came off. So he, let's take a look at our U.S. Army of One starting lineups on the line for Texas Tech. Dylan Gandy, the senior from Pflugerville, Texas, he anchors the line from that center position. And in the running back, Scott, keep an eye on Torian Henderson. He is explosive both running and catching the ball. He's one of seven receivers, double-digit receptions this year. So that's a first down for Texas Tech. Now Texas goes to a three-man rush. We saw Nebraska do it, but it was very unsuccessful. Now keep it on the ground with Henderson. Gets up to the 45-yard line. The Texas defense has played exceptionally well. Always around the football on the line is Roderick Wright. He leads the charge for that defensive line of preseason All-American. Linebacker spot, we talked about DJ, but Aaron Harris is probably the biggest hitter on the team. And in the secondary, Michael Huff at strong safety. But we may see him covering the slot receiver, Charles. We're seeing that right now. He's going into the slot. Looks like he's lining up. And from the second one in, that's Michael Huff right there. And cover that receiver. Unless they play zone, then he'll drop back into his assigned spot. Second down and nine. They rush four. Humby's pass a little bit low. Intended for Bristol Olamua, the big junior out of Hawaii, who had an exceptional game against Nebraska. Mike Leach, he used this off week very well. He, last week they had a bye. He said they just tried to self-scout, and but they continued to play fast even in their practice. And what he said, they honed in on the little things, making sure you get everything right. And it's always easier to coach a team hard after a victory, even during an open week. That's exactly what Texas Tech did. Third down and nine. You see what they've done on the year. Texas's defense, excellent third down situation. Only 28%. They show blitz. Here they come. Can be hit as he throws. Are they going to call it a pass or a fumble? The official is going to call it a fumble, and a penalty flag is thrown right at the 40-yard line. I'm not sure, Charles. It looked like his arm was in motion. Yeah, that, that's going to be a tough one. Let's see what Steve, Steve Uschek tells us here. Illegal touching, number 77 of the offense. The result is a loss of down. Yeah, the illegal Fourth touching. Yeah. That, that comes from the ball coming out of the hands of Sonny Cumbie and hitting Dylan Gandy in the back. Watch the right side of your screen, number 27, Michael Griffin, on the blitz. Yes, he was coming forward. It should be an incomplete pass, but great pressure by Texas. The first time that they won after Sonny Cumbie tonight. I know it's a short time into the game, but Texas is going to mix and match all night long on defense and try and choose their spots when to go after Sonny Cumbie. They don't want to leave themselves vulnerable in the secondary too often by Blitzen. Well, we want to thank Allstate for providing tonight's goalpost cam. You're in good hands with Allstate. Aaron Ross for Texas standing back at his own 15-yard line. Alex Reyes, the punter, barely gets it away. Ross will let it go. Takes a great Texas step hop, and it'll be down at about the 8-yard line. And that's where Texas will begin after a punt of 52 yards. The Texas offense, despite that anemic pass game, averaging over 440 yards per game. Vince Young, the sophomore, he is 11-2 as the starter.
Forget about what you've heard about him. Texas Tech knows his potential, Charles. And they saw a lot of it last year. He had a couple of touchdown passes in the game, threw for over 200 yards, a couple of interceptions before he gave way to Chance Mock, who led the leading, the, the winning drive for Texas. But Vince Young can hurt you with his arm and especially with his legs if he can get to the corner. Now, Texas is a fast starting football team. Texas Tech is not. Texas outscoring opponents 89-17 in the first. They keep it on the ground, just what we thought they would do, and the Texas Tech defense is there to stop Benson. Then Scott, the sophomore from Newton, Texas, on the stop. The rest of that long, hard offense, Jason Glenn at center. He calls the shots for the line. He was a very smart young man and very athletic. And the running back and wide receivers. Keep an eye on the tight end, David Thomas. Joins Bo Scape as the best one-two combination at tight end. And we expect them to use them a little more than they have the last two games. Yeah, they've had to use them in pass protection more in the last two games. They'd like to get them out on pass routes. So we look at the Texas line coming up, already pointing out their assignments about where they expect the blitz or the rushers to come. Now the tight end goes in motion. They'll keep it on the ground on a little draw. Up to about the 13-yard line. Again, it is Ben Benson, Chris Huddler on the stop. Texas Tech defense, five picks versus Nebraska for the first time in a long time. Everybody is healthy on the line. Seth Nishman, a defensive end, probably the best all-around defensive player. John Saldi didn't play at uh, Nebraska, a very fiery player, son of Jay, former Cowboy. And in the secondary, Josh Rangel gets a start at strong safety. He is a big-time hitter. Big third down here for Texas early in the ball game. They wanted to establish Cedric Benson. Now Vince Young has to establish himself as a thrower. And we've got a whistle and a penalty flag, and they'll bring it back. It is tough to hear down on the field. You know, we talk about that as Steve Juszczyk, our referee. This is a very difficult place to play. Gary Patterson at TCU said one of the loudest places to play, and Mac Brown knows something about that. And this will be a difficult game to officiate because of the emotion that comes into the game on both sides, as well as the stakes. False start. Offense. Number 73. Still third down. And that hurts, obviously, because it's five yards against Texas, but what hurts more is the play call that came in for Vince Young, got him to the corner, and was a run-pass option. Now with now third and more like 10, yeah. kind of takes away the run part of the option. Now the ball probably has to be in the air, although he can break contain or try and sift his way up the middle, but a lot more difficult spot for the Longhorns. Longhorns 103rd in passing. If that ranking holds up, it'll be their lowest in 21 years. Vince Young, just a sophomore. He is right in front of the student section, so it is very loud. Texas Tech switching defenses on the snap. Young, here's where he is dangerous. Gets up over the 20-yard line to the 22-yard line, and that'll be good enough for a first down. Adele Duckett, the senior from Mineral Wells, on the stop. Let me read you a quote from Lyle Setensic, the defensive coordinator of Texas Tech. He said, I don't like to play quarterbacks who throw some but run a lot. Vince Young will fall into that category today. A little confidence factor right now with him in terms of throwing the football. Hasn't had much success recently, but he knows that his legs are his bread and butter. And that's Lyle Setensich, the defensive coordinator in the booth for Texas Tech. That's what he did not want to see. Quarterback that was contained, that broke free, and made a first down against his defense. All right, let's see if they throw it on first down because they've been talking about throwing on first and third downs a little more, but they all keep it on the ground. Benson up to the 25-yard line. He is stacked up by a slew of Red Raiders, including Deke Bake, the junior out of Sacramento, California. And what you just saw there, partner, number 32 carrying the football, be prepared. Don't be surprised if he carries the football 40 times oh, tonight. Yeah. We talked to him in practice yesterday. He said, I'm up for that. Not a problem. He and the offensive line finished off the Missouri game with a 71-yard drive where he carried the ball eight times out of 11 plays, the last six consecutively, ending up in a touchdown to ice the game. He's a horse for work. He won't mind touching it that often. Uh, they get it out into the flat, and it's complete up to the 26-yard line. Bo Skate right at the line of scrimmage. Probably didn't gain anything. John Saldi, the junior out of South Lake, Texas, just outside of Dallas on the stop. And he has been dinged up a lot. He is a huge addition to this team. We saw him a couple of years ago as a freshman, and they said this young man is going to be quite a player. And he has turned out to be quite a player. Formerly a weak side linebacker, moved to the strong side this year, part of the 3S Mafia at linebacker. 
John Saldi, Mike Smith, Brock Stratton. First time they've been together on the field in a number of games and healthy. And what a great open field tackle by Saldi. Third down and six now for the Longhorns. Ball's at the 26. Tech rushes four. Young has the time. Complete, incomplete. Great hit right over the middle. Pass was intended for David Thomas. And we do have a flag go back. It's going to be offsides against Texas Tech. Trying to hit the tight end across the middle. Ball was coming out, but Vincent Meeks ensured it. Number one, the free safety with a nice hit on David Thomas, the tight end. Well, there was an offsides call against Tech, though, on the play. Offside. Defense. Number 91. Five yard penalty. Third now I didn't see anyone jump. Was he lined up offside? I guess he must have been, but this is a problem for Mike Leach and the Red Raiders. They average over 100 yards in penalties a game. And what's bad is I think every game but OU, they've been plus 100 yards penalty. They, they can't do that in this game tonight. Yeah, and, and here's and here's where it really hurts Tech. They just made a great play, right? Appeared to stop Texas, forcing them to punt. Now it's third and yeah. one. So what do you do if you're Texas? Who do you find right now? That guy, 32, Cedric Benson coming right at you. Well, Will Matthews is the fullback. And he'll lead the way for Benson. Leans forward up to the 32-yard line. I don't think he got it. I don't think that he did either on first blush. And that will be huge for Texas Tech if they were able to stop T Texas on their bread and butter play right out of the gate on a third and short. Mac Brown more involved in the offensive play calling on the headset. Said he did it along for a long time and kind of likes it. Says it's given him some new energy. Yeah, kind of reinvigorated him. Texas thought about it on the sideline yeah. for a moment about going up fourth and short. Then they looked at field position again and Mac Brown made what I think is the prudent call. Kick it away. Your defense had a great, great stop on first down on the first series. Go ahead and kick it. Don't give Tech the ball that close in. Uh, but I thought they weren't going to play conservatively in this game. Yeah, well, there's conservative and there's reckless. <laughs> Good call, partner. High spiraling kick. Amendola back to the 15-yard line. Fumbled the football. It's still loose, and he wisely falls on it. Back at the 13. 54 yards on the kick. We are scoreless in Lubbock, Texas, <laughs> which we, we were not able to make this week, and we do apologize. But uh, we do want to say thanks to all the people in Lubbock. The mayor stopped by yesterday to say hi to us. And did, did the crickets get anything out of this? No. Uh, well, let's hope they got a picture in there. I mean, at least, a a, at least an early photo when they were together, right? Yeah. All right, Texas coming out. They've played nickel the whole way. Five defensive backs have been on the field. That's allowed Texas to keep Aaron Harris number two and Derek Johnson number 11 on the field, their best linebackers. All right, Sonny Cumbie's changing the play. We saw him in the Nebraska game, how good he is at doing that. Keeps it, pass over the middle, pass is complete to Haverty. Up to the 30-yard line. Philip Giger on the stop. Okay, take a look on the inside. That's number seven, Trey Haverty, coming across the field. Just a simple crossing route after the fake to the running back to Torian Henderson. That held the Texas defense. Nice pass completion, 16-yard gain for the Red Raiders. Seven receptions for 64 yards versus Nebraska. Here's a guy that started out as a backup. He's one of the many in double-figure receptions. The quick pass, again, complete up to the 40-yard line, close to the first down. Bristol Olamua. Hadn't played football since 1999 prior to this year. Fans, this telecast is available with Spanish translation via the SAP button on your remote control. You know, here's a big guy, Bristol Olamua, 6'6", they say 260. Probably the best <laughs> hands on the team, though. Yeah, terrific hands, and they say that he's come along faster after returning from a Mormon mission than they expected. Has really knocked the rust off and gives them a big threat, obviously, at 6'6". Now Texas with three on the line, big splits. Cumbie, plenty of time, picks the defense apart. Pass is complete. Nehemiah Glover looking for Pater inside the 10 yard line, knocked out of bounds at the four.
They want to put pressure on Cumbie, but Charles, he had all day to throw that football, and that you just can't do that against Texas. He really didn't need all day because he set up after about his third step, bounced right into the pattern, and Glover caught the ball with no one around him. And then he's able to get to the sideline before Griffin, with some help from Derek Johnson, knocks him out of bounds. A huge play, 58 yards on the connection from Cumbie to Nehemiah Glover. That's his longest of the year. He's coming off that 12 reception, one touchdown game versus Nebraska. Now, Texas Tech knocking on the door. They'll keep it on the ground. Anderson gets down to about the two yard line. Texas Tech about 80% in the red zone. 24 of their 28 scores have been through the touchdown. Notice Tech not spending a lot of time huddling on this possession. Oh, when they were out in the field, they were going from the line of scrimmage. Now they're huddling up near the goal line. This is where now you find what they call people plays. You put your best players running their best routes in the right, right position to try and gain a score. Not necessarily the play, but the person. Nehemiah Glover, he's in the slot. He's a guy who says, I want to make big plays. That's him right there. He wants to make big plays. He's already made one on this drive. Now they give it to Henderson. Did he get in? Touchdown, Texas Tech. The drive was vintage Texas Tech. Five plays, 86 yards. It only took him a minute and 53. Mike Leach says, forget about time of possession. We just want to score every time we have the football. Yeah, they worry more about the number of plays that they run as opposed to time of possession. And they're out of the gate strong today. Malika's extra point is good. So the Red Raiders, who have had some great games with Texas here in Lubbock, have drawn first blood. 7 nothing. Great drive by the Red Raiders. Texas is typically the team you mentioned it Ron that starts fast in the first quarter an 89 to 17 advantage against teams coming into this game. What Texas did not want to have happen was to play from behind That's against right. Texas Tech because of the lack of confidence Vince Young has right now in the passing game. Right now it's only seven points so expect Texas to rely on their strengths for a while running the football with Cedric Benson. He's too good. It's now 12 of his last 18 kickoffs have been touchbacks. But let's go back to the big play. Tell us what happened for Texas defensively. Well, Texas has been playing their base nickel to start the game. One, two, three, four, five defensive backs. This is Nehemiah Glover in the slot. He's going to come down and run a crossing route. Cumbie's going to hit him in the middle, and then he gets to the sideline because he's on the move. See? And when he's on the move, now able to break contain against the defensive back. Michael Griffin lost the angle for a while before he's able to come back and get some help from Derek Johnson, but the damage is done. 58 yards on the completion. Tech scores two plays later. Derek Johnson had to run a long way to make that tackle. Now they run it from the shotgun. Young's going to keep it. He's got some space. Dances over the 25, up to about the 28-yard line. Pick up of eight on the play. Josh Rangel, the senior out of West Covina, California, coming up to make the stop. Getting the starting nod today. This is a defense that was horrendous last year, to say the least. <laughs> Lyle Sentensich has done a magnificent job just getting these guys competitive. He said, if we finished in the middle of the pack of the country, we'd be good. He's done a lot better than that. Well, they're 40th in the defense, the 40th in the country in total defense right now. At this same juncture last year, they were 109th. I'd say they've made a heck of an improvement on defense at Texas Tech. The last two games, Vince Young only 11 of 32 with two interceptions throwing a football. And this is where he's dangerous. Gets up to about the 28-yard line. Vincent Meeks, the junior out of Rockwall, Texas, with Khalid Naziru Dean coming up to make the stop. I think there's miscommunication by Texas here. This was supposed to be a fake to the fullback, then a flip to Benson out here. Right? See, watch, see where Vince Young was looking? He was trying to flip it to the backside. That was a play that they put in last week and used very well against Missouri. Cedric Benson didn't go out there. That left Vince Young on his own and puts Texas in a third and short situation. Third down and one, 6.06 in the first. An electric atmosphere here at Jones SBC Stadium in Lubbock. Loading up, Vince Young Tech. now talking to his receivers or is he taking a timeout? He's going to take a timeout. 
They want to talk about it on third down and just a shade over one and we'll step aside also. Texas Tech leading 7-0, 558 left to play in the first quarter. Texas, the ball on their own 29-yard line, facing third down and just over one. You'd expect them just to bang it and sort of sort of show Texas Tech this is what we're going to do all night. It's too early to try and get away from your game plan. Must try to establish the run early, get physical up front. Well, everybody's jumping. We'll have penalties. Texas Tech jumped and then Texas lifted up. We'll have to sort this out again. Steve's been busy tonight. Yeah, it should be a freeze play and Texas should have a first down. Getting Tech to jump in the neutral zone. Ball snap. Quarterback goes down to a knee because the play should be taken care of by penalty. Third penalty already on Tech. That'd be Ken Scott right in the middle. See him jumping, and then the ball snapped, and Vince Young goes down to a knee. That's called a freeze play. Once you get them into the neutral zone, the center's taught to snap the ball immediately. Quarterback goes down to a knee. It's not really a play for the offense. The play is getting the five yards. Mission accomplished. Now we're going to hold things up again. The officials are going to talk over a little bit more. You know, one thing they've done during this last week and what they've done this year is they've asked Vince Young what place he is comfortable with. I think that's interesting. We, we saw that uh, the last couple of weeks in our telecast. Yeah, I think they've done that all year, but the emphasis has increased as the production in the pass game has gone down. What plays do you like to run? What passes are you comfortable mm -hmm. with? And letting him have a hand in the game plan in hopes that by his having ownership, it will increase his production offensively. On first and ten, he's going to put it up, looks into the flat. Throws it, pass complete, the 45-yard line. Linus Sweet, the very talented redshirt freshman out of Washington, Texas, Brenham High School, wearing Roy Williams number four, pick up a 13 on the play. Watch Vince Young in the pocket. He's got Cedric Benson swinging towards you at home. Off to your to the right in the bottom of the screen. Had pressure on him up front. Able to hit Linus Sweet with about a 10-yard stop route. 10-yard hitch and able to stick it right in there. Lima Swede, number four. You just mentioned him, partner. The Texas coaches say he's gaining confidence and coming oh, yeah. along rapidly. Good enough for a first down. Little play fake. Young puts it up into the flat. Excellent pass and catch. Bo Skate, the big senior tight end out of Denver, Colorado. That is what is so difficult when you have two tight ends that can catch the football like these guys can. Bo Skate right in here. Coming down here, watch how Vince Young goes in the pocket now with some confidence. Hits a nice pass before, steps in, delivers the ball on time and very accurately to Bo Scape. See how he hit him going to the sideline? Beautiful throw, 13-yard gain. Right now, Vince Young getting into the football game very well as their quarterback. Uh, no effects from that Bruce Sternum he got last week. Keeps the ball straight up the middle, a lot of running room. He is in a rhythm right now. Vincent Meeks on the stop. And you know who else is in rhythm with him? Greg Davis, the offensive yeah. coordinator, and Mac Brown, the head coach. The play calling is going very well for him right now. How about the old single wing? Fake it yep. inside. This is called a zone run. He fakes it inside to Benson, sees the gap, and hurdles right up the middle, coming right at you. Another big game for the Longhorns. Another first down. And Vince Young feeling more and more comfortable here in Lubbock. Three plays in a row, 13 yards for Vince Young and the Longhorns. Rushed for almost 1,000 yards last year, 998. First and 10 from the 27. He's just going to tuck it and keep it. Has some space. Knocked out of bounds at about the 16-yard line. That'll be good enough for another first down. Naziru Dean on the stop. So Vince Young basically says, okay, everybody wants to talk about my throw, and I'm just going to run the football. Now, this has the potential to be an option. Benson is going to circle out with him. See Benson 32, but he's got it tucked right away. He wants to run, but see how Benson stays with him? So he always has a trail guy for the pitch if necessary, but it wasn't on that play. Another first down for Texas. I said single wing, didn't I? We're seeing a lot of single wing type plays now. Quarterback sweep out of the shotgun. Quarterback zone play out of the shotgun. He's a multi-talented player. On first and ten. Again, skipping up to about the 12 yard line. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. 
Texas has been able to cross that a bunch of times on this drive, all courtesy of the legs and the arm of Vince Young. Now, this is a guy that averaged about seven yards a carry for his career last year, 7.4. That led everybody in the country with more than 100 rushes. And we're seeing why. And you know who else he's getting help from? Of course, the offensive line gets all the credit when the running's going well. But the receivers downfield have to block because this guy gets into the secondary. He helps them get mm -hmm. to the third level of the defense. Tony Jeffrey wide to the right on second down and look for the option. Young going to keep it, throws the stiff arm up, gets down to the five-yard line, maybe the four. That should be good enough for another first down. Josh Rangel again on the stop. Let's see where they spot the football. Might be just about a foot short. He had to get to the five-yard line. And Mac Brown has to be very happy right now talking with Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, because right now Texas has Texas Tech in a pick-your-problems situation. Yeah. Meaning, if you come up and force Young to pitch it, he pitches it to Cedric Benson, the leading rusher in the country. He keeps yeah. it. He's running the ball very well. What do you do defensively? Well, on third down and one, they go for the first down, and they should have it. This is a Texas offense that's 53-0, and when they outrush their opponents. And when you're playing a team as potent as Texas Tech, Matt Brown made no bones. They want to keep the ball away from him. Yeah, because when Texas Tech's offense is over on the bench, they can't hurt you as much, can That's they? That's right. And this drive is big for them. That's Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator for the Texas Longhorns. You mentioned the he, him having a rhythm early in the game, Ron. Yep. Definitely has that right now. He's playing whatever music that he likes to dance to in his head right now. On first and goal, Benson stacked up right at the two-yard line. Got about a yard on the play. Seth Nichman. The sophomore out of Corpus Christi, Texas, Callahan High School, a former high school quarterback on the stop. You know, you look at Cedric Benson, he needed 12 yards to crack 1,000 and join an elite group of six running backs who have gotten 1,000 yards in each of their four years of college running. That is an incredible, incredible feat. Yeah, we can talk about only six guys having done it in the oh, history yeah. of college football. Quite an accomplishment. He's got plenty left before the season's over. Well, these two teams have really locked horns in the last couple of years, and last year was no different. This is after in 2002 right here, Texas Tech won, basically knocked Texas out of a BCS Bowl. Yeah, we see here as we look at it, Texas won four of the last five meetings, but Texas Tech has won two out of the last three here in Lubbock. So, you know, it's not one of those where every other year they, they alternate playing at home. It's, you know, sometimes you're at home a couple years, sometimes you're not. But a great rivalry. A chance mock last year on that final drive. Yeah. Four or five, 74 yards, a 54-yard bomb to Roy Williams with Vincent Meeks. The free safety for Texas Tech fell down on the play before culminating with the touchdown pass to B.J. Johnson. This drive, Vince Young has rushed seven times for 46 yards. Just about his career average. You know, I'm curious here about what Texas may decide to do on the sidelines. Because yeah. Vince Young has been very good for them, not just on the perimeter, but tucking it inside and yeah. running, running really between the guards. But the other thing is, you've got a rough, tough offensive line that you really want to establish some physical dominance. I wonder if Greg Davis is thinking, I want to pound at these guys, make it yeah. more down territory, Mac, and give it to 32 three times if we have to, because we really need to establish ourselves in this game. Well, Young stays in the shotgun. Benson to his right. And that remember the zone play they've run most of the evening so far, faking it inside to Benson. Young keeping it. Second and goal. Young's going to keep it again. Has Pater. Touchdown, Texas. Vince Young, only his second rushing touchdown of the year. It goes two yards, and he was the man on that drive. He definitely deserved that one, didn't he? Oh, yeah. He took him down there, had a chance to get in, but he got a lot of help from his friends on the last play. Eight rushes, 48 yards for Vince Young on that drive, including the touchdown, and now Texas has a chance to tie it. Great help from Cedric Benson, number 32, Justin Blaylock on the blocks on the touchdown run. Well, Dusty Mangum, 181 for 183 in his career, one of the best kickers in college football. Stays perfect on the year, 24 and 24. But Vince Young was the man running and throwing the football watch, on that drive. Watch Benson, number 32, with the lead block. See how he chops down the lineman? That allows Vince Young to get to the corner. Got just enough of a block on the corner from number two, Brian Carter. See Carter? It's a stalk block right there. 
Just enough on the top to allow Vince Young to use his feet to slide in just inside the pylon for the tying score. You know, talking with Mac Brown last night, and you know, he has been under a great deal of criticism in the state of Texas. You know, last week he picked up his 150, 150th coaching victory, but no coach in Texas history, not even Daryl Royal, has won nine games in six consecutive seasons or 11 games in back-to-back -back years. He does not deserve the criticism he got, and a lot of national pundits say, come on, you know, you can't beat Oklahoma. There's a lot of teams that haven't beaten <laughs> that, Oklahoma. That's always my number one question. Okay, that's fine. Who beats Oklahoma? Yeah. That's my first question. My second one is, does anyone remember what the program was like before Mac Brown took over? Absolutely. How many tickets were being sold? Not very many. The place is sold out every week now. How many games were they winning? They were four and seven before he took over. Now, you just mentioned how many games they've won since he's been there. Hey, the Big 12 is one of the toughest conferences in the country, yep. and OU is one of the best teams in the country. Texas will find a way to get this turned around, but I can't imagine who would be better at Texas than Mac Brown. Done a great job. Mack and Amendola back to the kick. And this time, Danny Amendola, the true freshman, says, I'm going to take a seat. Let's check in, see what happened with Michigan and Purdue. All right, EJ, of course, you'll have all the scores and highlights coming up at halftime. Big day, big day in the Big 12. Missouri, Oklahoma State going down to the wire. AM, Colorado. Wow, what a big win again for Michigan on the wow. road. Texas again in their nickel look. Let's see if they try and get a little more pressure on Sonny Cumbie with the linebackers adding to the rush of the front four. Well, they rush four. Cumbie sees some pressure. Has a man wide open up to the 40-yard line. Again, it is Nehemiah Glover. His second catch tonight, the senior from Lamarck, Texas. Fourth all-time receiver in Texas Tech history. You know what's happening here? The front line of, of uh, Texas Tech, the offensive line, is giving Sonny Cumbie enough time for the receivers to run deeper routes than normal. And Nehemiah Glover able to slip into the secondary, beating the drops of the Texas defensive backs, that time for a 20-yard game. Now they only sacked B.J. Simmons one time in last year's game. And that's by Marcus Tubbs, and he's not here anymore. Not here anymore. He plays on Sundays. Gumby sees some pressure, throws it, intercepted at the 48-yard line. Texas with great field position down to the 24-yard line. Armand Satchel, the junior out of Denver, Colorado. And this is why Greg Robinson came in. See Armand? He drops into the middle. It's a zone blitz. He started at defensive end, faked the rush, went back to the middle, allowed someone else to come up and rush for him, jumped right into the passing route of Sonny Cumby. He expected that area to be vacant because he read the defensive backs and, and, the, and the linebackers moving out. This is why the defense coordinator, Greg Robinson, was hired for these types of games. Change up their defense and their system, that's what he just did. And Vince Young back to the option. Pitches it back. Benson trips at the 15-yard line. Penalty fly comes flying in. Benson looked like he had golden goalposts. Texas getting high, wide, and handsome in their playbook now. They set this one up earlier, remember? When Vince Young just tucked it under his arm yep. and ran to the corner with Cedric Benson trailing. This time there's a true option, although it's going to come back because of a hold. But this time, Holy same play. Offense. Number 12, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, still first down. That's Tony Jeffrey, the wide receiver. See him right there blocking on Khalid Nazir Udin. Well, That's a tough one right there because Texas don't want to talk about that one later. <laughs> They're going to yep. say, hey. I'm not sure about but this. But you know, these officials do such a great job. They're on the spot. They see more than I do. I always give them the benefit of the doubt as much as possible, but that's a tough one. That'll be first down and 12 from the 27 now for Texas. 2-0-1 left to play in the first quarter, knotted up at seven. Little play action, great fake by Young. He's got a lot of green in front of him, looks for a block, gets it, skips out of bounds right at the 14-yard line, another Texas first down. Bo Scaife had a great block from that tight end position. And Bo Scaife was supposed to be the guy running the route. All right, this is Bo, Bo Scape right here. Comes out, runs a route. Now watch Vince Young as he comes out. He realizes right now, I'm going to run. You see how he flagged the football? And he told Bo Scape, block, block, block. 
get downfield. And that's exactly what he did. Nice job by Vince Young seeing the field rather than hitting Skate for a short three yard gain, able to get more than 10 with his legs. Plus 13 on the run. Benson stops, makes a big cut, gets down to about the 11 yard line. The big senior out of Midland, Texas. Well, you know, Vince Young has been under a lot of criticism, but one of his biggest fans who understands what he's going through is head coach, Mac Brown. What he's doing. Keeps it again. He's having fun, even more fun as he gets inside the five down to the two. Rangel again on the stop. When we start calling Josh Rangel's name every play, Texas Tech better think about it. They're not getting any help. Yeah, too many tackles from the strong safety position. Always a hitting position, but they don't want him that far down in the secondary. That's Lyle Setensich right there behind the pole. He's a D coordinator trying to figure out how to stop this Texas running attack. Doing a great job with this zone play, Ron. Yeah. Faking it inside of Cedric Benson. Two offensive linemen folding around and coming up and leading in the hole for Vince Young. It's been a big weapon for them early. First and goal from the two. Couple of tight ends. Thomas in motion. Young looks to keep it. His second touchdown of the night. They're doing exactly what they wanted to do, the Texas Longhorns. They're keeping the ball away from that Texas Tech offense. They're running the football, and they're running it successfully. And since the first series, they're doing what they want to, when they want to, and how they want to. And that's tough for a defense to take, because right now Texas is doing all the dictating to Texas Tech on the offensive end. Rusty Mangum, the senior out of Mesquite, Texas, for the extra point. Good snap, good hold, and good kick. So Vince Young taking control of this game with his legs. And here's the, Texas Tech is a missed tackle away from a good play. John Salvi, number five, not sure whether he takes the quarterback and how deep Vince Young's going to be. Not in a good hitting position there. Vince Young easily slips past him and waltzes into the end zone. We talked about confidence, and we were asking Mac Brown, you know, and, and also Greg Davis earlier this week, would Chance Mock play? And they said, well, it's, you know, it's a game time decision. With that in mind, knowing that Chance Mock is sitting there, what does this do to Vince Young's confidence? Especially, he's thrown the ball well tonight, and he's run the ball well. And it's twofold, really. It's, it's Vince Young's confidence and Vince Young's teammates' confidence. And there's Chance Mock, number five, who's really been a good soldier all year long for his ball club because he's wanted to play. But he accepted the backup role even after last week when he played, you know, extensive minutes against mm -hmm. Missouri. And they asked, well, will, will you start? He said, Vince Young is our starting quarterback. And he knew that the team needed Vince Young to have confidence and be propped up. And he's getting it. So Vince Young's getting it from his play. And his team is absorbing what Vince Young's giving them right now. And they're getting more confident on the offensive end. How about Coach Mock with Tony Jeffrey right there? That's pretty good. Yeah, don't, don't hold next time on that play, Tony. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> Danny Amendola gets it at the five, hits to the left side. Sneaks around the first tackler, looking for some space. He's doing some dancing, a little Fred Astaire. Now he's got some wide open room. Up to the 24 yard line penalty flag is thrown. He ran about 150 yards and probably got 20 and, mit and broke about six or seven tackles didn't he. And oftentimes when a play takes that long and it zigzags it's usually a penalty against the receiving team. Let's see how this one turns out. Well, Cedric Griffin is down at the 15 yard line for Texas and he's being attended to five yards from the end of the run. Down. Good Boy, that, that would be a huge loss if Cedric Griffin is hurt. Hurts him because they're trying to play nickel almost the whole way. Five defensive backs, and he's one of their starters. We'll check that. It's not Cedric Griffin. Not Cedric Griffin. It's Drew Kelson. Drew Kelson. Hopefully he's okay. Not putting any pressure on the leg. We hope he's going to be all right. Well, Texas Tech will take over first and 10 their own 29 yard line. They scored on their first possession. Vintage Texas Tech and the Longhorns have come back with a couple of scores themselves. Last time Texas showed zone blitz Armand Satchel Armand Satchel with the interception that led to a touchdown. Let's we'll see what Greg Robinson has in store this time matching wits with Mike Leach. Final, Texas 20, Tech. final 26 seconds of the quarter. Little shuttle pass. Dorian Henderson, no place to go. He's going to lose about three. 
Franco Cam, the true freshman out of Dallas, Texas, Lake Highlands High School on the stop, and they are high on this man whose nickname is the Nightmare. And he was that time for Mike Leach in his play call, a little shovel pass inside, similar to the old Utah pass. We saw Lee Gross Cup last week out at Cal, who made it famous at the University of Utah. Followed it right down and made a great play, uh, snuffing it out behind the line of scrimmage. Well, Texas took football on hand as their Red Raiders face second down and 13 from the 26. Now they try and spread out Texas with the wide splits. Texas playing three down linemen, three linebackers, and five defensive backs. Come be the quick toss into the flat. Pass is complete. Trey Haverty gets up to about the 35-yard line. Air call on the stop. You know, Sonny Cumbie, you talk about criticism of Vince Young. He had basically the same type of criticism earlier in the year. We talked about at the top of the show. He validated himself and Mike Leach's confidence last or two weeks ago against Nebraska. And yeah, Mike Leach never wavered in his no. confidence with Sonny Cumbie. That was all talk show fodder. He chose him as his quarterback, and he's going to be his quarterback. And he's played awfully well for him this year. Here comes Texas on the blitz. Cumbie gets away with it quickly. Up to the 40-yard line, a first down. Cody Fuller, the junior out of Smithson Valley High School outside of San Antonio, Texas. First reception of the night, 25th on the year. And Mike Leach talks about how these games, as we watch Fuller number 24, nice little in and out route. Michael Griffin goes for the strip, ends up holding on, and then gets some help from Eric Hall, number 49. But, but he was talking earlier this week about getting respect in this game mm -hmm. by beating Texas and how much it means. Mike Leap said they all are the same to him, not to guys like him, not to Cody Fuller is not. Well, I tell you what, Sonny Cumbie did not put Nehemiah Glover in a very good position there. He could have been decapitated by Griffin. But this is zone defense by the Longhorns. Watch Griffin number eight just sits in the short zone, reads the play, bam. Oh, that could have hurt. That could leave a mark. You see that? Yeah. What a great job. There's Greg Robinson, the co-defensive coordinator, along with Dwayne Aquina. He's got the energy of Pete Carroll. And Pete, if you're watching, Greg says he, <laughs> he, he gave you that enthusiasm, <laughs> not the other way around. Okay, he made right. sure to emphasize right. that when we talked to him. Quick pass into the flat. Nehemiah Glover up over the 45 to the 46-yard line. Pick up about five on the play. Set up a third down and five situation. You know, Nehemiah Glover, he, he's one of the great receivers in in the history of Texas Tech. But when he scored that touchdown against Nebraska, there was almost a sigh of relief from him because he had not caught a touchdown pass this year. He came into the season needing only three to be the all-time touchdown leader at Texas Tech. That was his first of the season. He had expected to have that record broken oh, yeah. at that point. Wasn't able to make as many big plays as he would have liked, but things start to see, they seem to be coming together for him now. Now on third down and four. Texas showing blitz. They bring three. Cumbie's got to move. Pass complete up to the 45-yard line. Bristol Olamua, the big tight end, his second reception of the night. Great recognition, though, by Sonny Cumbie on that. Great recognition and a good job using his legs to keep the play alive long enough for him to find Olamua. See, he doesn't really get out of the pocket, doesn't really scramble, but just enough in terms of two or three steps outside, giving Olamua a chance to break back inside against the pressure. That's one way to beat the blitz from Texas. First down and 10 now from the 46-yard line. Texas, here comes the blitz. Cumbie gets it away into the flat. Complete down to about the 43-yard line. The pressure was put on by Tim Crowder. But Bristol Olamua again. And one of the things that Texas Tech receivers, they have the, the, the green light to what they call settle yeah. in, in a zone. And what they mean by that is when you find an open patch of grass, or in this case, AstroTurf, you settle into it and let your quarterback find you. Don't keep running into another zone where you might run into coverage. Mm -hmm. Find the spot, find the open space, Sonny Cumbie will find you. Second and five. Here comes Texas again with a blitz. And again, the pass is complete. The big hit, but this time Glover holds on. Michael Griffin laid the wood to him, and they're talking about it. Now we're getting a little chippy. And what we got on that play, what do they use? What do they talk about in business all the time? A win-win situation? Yeah. Well, it was a win for Texas Tech because this ball was completed to Nehemiah Glover for a first down. 
but a win for Texas because Michael Griffin really popped Nehemiah Glover, and that was exactly what's in the game plan of Greg Robinson. Be physical with these right. receivers. Every catch, make them pay for it. They hope that it pays off down the road as this game continues. Another first and ten, though, for the Red Raiders. Four-man rush. Come be plenty of time. Wide open to the ten, to the seven-yard line. Cody Fuller. The center fielder on the baseball team split Greg Robinson's zone, and Philip Geiger had to make the touchdown saving tackle. Look at the offensive line of Texas Tech. See what they've done for Sonny Cumby, giving him nothing but time. So, what happened was Aaron Harris, number two, moved up in coverage, took himself out of the middle zone, and that allowed Cody Fuller, number 24, to cross behind him for a 24 yard gain before Texas tackles him. And it's first and goal now from the seven. Texas with five down linemen. Two tight ends. They give it to Henderson looking for a block. Tries to outrun him. Gets to the five down to the three yard line. He got every one of those yards by himself as a penalty flag is thrown. I thought he was going to be dumped back at the 10 Charles great observation because he should have been dumped back at the 10 but he made the nice moves and, and worked himself upfield and he may benefit from a face mask on this one at the end of the play. That was the first run of this drive for Texas Tech. Well Steve use check being busy again tonight. Personal foul. Face mask. On the defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Take a look at look at the move there. He puts on Tim Crowder, number 80. He comes up with air and then almost runs through Aaron Ross before he takes him down. Then at the end of the play, watch Aaron Ross, 31. Right there. See how he gets his hand in the yeah. face mask? Boom. Got it right there. And then he stays with it. That's why he called the 15 yarder the way he went down. Well, it's first and goal now from the one for Texas Tech, trailing by seven. Henderson bouncing to the outside. Did he get in? No signal yet. Yeah, and that was great tackling by the Texas Longhorns. I think he ended up losing his lid on that one, so Torian Henderson did. Looked like he had his momentum going forward yeah. the corner. But watch the way Texas gets him at the end. All right, dances to the outside. Now he's going full speed for the corner. Look at the hits right there. Number two, Aaron Harris. It looked like also number 52, Garnet Smith. In on the play, knocking him backwards. Exactly what Greg Robinson wants to see. But Texas Tech still second down and just shy of the goal line. Well, the people are booing. They saw the replay. They thought he was in. But it's about a ball away from the goal line. Second and goal for Texas Tech. Looking to tie it up. Oftentimes, this is quarterback sneak territory. Gumby pushes his way in. Touchdown. He usually throws for the scores. This time he gets to actually take one in. Look at the surge by the offensive line. Give them credit. That's number 77, Dylan Gandy. Number 63, Manny Ramirez. They got the big surge for him up front. He just fell on top of those big guys and rode them in. Almost surfed his way in. Hang 10, Sonny Cumbie. His second rushing touchdown of the year for Sonny Cumbie. An impressive drive on the arm and ending up on the legs of Cumbie. We are in the second quarter and we have a Texas shootout. Number eight, Texas and Texas Tech knotted up at 14. Texas Tech, the only school since the inception of the Big 12 to finish every year with a winning record. It surprises a lot of people, and Mike Leach has them believing they can win tonight. Great Red fired up, didn't he? He's fired up tonight, and he should be. Ten minutes to play in the first half. We've already hung 28 on the scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> you look at the last couple of years, there's a lot of 40s up there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Big 12 tra outdoor track and field That's championships. Right. <laughs> and again, too good with that. Too good of a leg, just busting it into the end zone. Craig Sager. Not much was known by the Texas Tech office. His own defensive coordinator was known him since the 70s and said, listen, I want you to tell me everything you can about this guy. 
And Vince Young complete inside the 40-yard line. Down to the 38, Tony Jeffrey, the senior out of Clyde Forest High School. I got one more comment if you want to come back. <laughs> All right, Greg. What a big-time play. Play action pass because you have to respect the threat of Cedric Benson running the football. And look at the time he received from his offensive line. Post route, Tony Jeffrey ends up beating Antonio Huffman, number 36, and unable to get the help short. Looked like number 23, Jeremy Woods. Craig, we haven't forgotten about you, buddy. We'll let you wrap it up here in a second. They pitch it back. Benson looking for some running room. Gets hit as he gets up to the 32-yard line. Craig, why don't you finish up about Coach Robinson? Well, a further note, Coach Leach then told Coach Sentinich to contact his former players that he coached in college that may have played for Robinson the pros to see if maybe he had changed over the past couple of years. And then on top of all that, they put together a scouting report. They decided that Robinson would tell the Texas defense that they would be very physical, that they were probably good enough to go with a four-man rush, and that they would play that 5-2 zone that Charles keeps talking about, but that they really felt that their defense was good enough to stop Texas Tech's offense. Sounds yeah. like they had a great scouting report because that's exactly what we've seen so far. Thank right. you, Craig. Three-man rush for Texas Tech. Texas right up the middle. Benson just bounding his way inside the 20 yard line down to the 16. This is a guy that almost 60% of his yards, about 56, come after contact. That shows you how physical he is. And watch him on this run. You talk about yards after contact, watch him inside. Right there. Boom. Brock Stratton has a chance. No, runs right through it. Then he almost runs through a second tackle downfield, a 14 yard gain for a first down. And there they are, the Magic Six. Cedric Benson just joining out 1,000 rushing yards in four straight seasons in college football. He's got the ball again inside the 20 down to the 18, and he's trying to become the first to add every year to what he had the previous year. He needs to get just over 1,300 this year, which if you go by what he's averaging, he's going to. Yeah, the Magic Six, Tony Dorsett, maybe the most famous one, a Heisman Trophy winner. Ron Dane, a Heisman Trophy winner right below him. Famous Amos Lawrence with the North Carolina Tar Heels in the late 70s. Denvis Manns, New Mexico State, not a name well known. Avon Coburn recently with West Virginia. But you just mentioned it, Ron, trying to increase every year. Yep. Cedric Benson would be the first guy out of those six to gain more yards from his freshman year to his sophomore to his junior to his senior year. Second down and six. Young just tucks it and keeps it. Gets inside the 10 down to about the nine yard line. And you have to say something about this Texas line because they have started better than 100 games together. And Mac McWhorter has done a great job of making them a physical line, and it goes back to the la to last year, really. Yeah, when they made Mac McWhorter the sole offensive line coach before he shared the mission with it for another coach, gave him total responsibility for it, and his first thing was, I've got to get these kids more physical. We've got to be stronger at the point of attack, and they're doing that. And in the running game of Texas, a lot of zone blocking, find a guy in front of you, put a hat on him, and then Vince Young and Cedric Benson, they find where the hole is and dive into it. Well, Will Matthews and Benson now in the eye formation, third down and two. Young keeps it, looking, throwing, complete, inside the five, touchdown Texas, David Thomas. <laughs> It appears as though defense is a four-letter word in Lubbock. <laughs> well, we always talk about in football counters. This is David Thomas. Here, here, here coming back to the to the other side. See 16? Remember earlier in the game when he had Bo Scape on the same type of a route and Cedric Benson told him to block and ran for about, excuse me, uh, Vince Young told him to block and ran for about 12 yards. This time he gave him a little sh little toss. Mm -hmm. David Thomas able to get his shoulders square. And how happy is he? He grew up here in the shadows of Lubbock, Texas. Wolforth, Texas. And the extra point is good. David Thomas with his fourth touchdown reception of the year. He was recruited by Texas Tech, but now he's scoring for the Longhorns. Now 21-14, the Longhorns, number eight in the country, have taken the lead over Texas Tech, 21-14. Tennis anyone? <laughs> because Texas just served the big ace, right? Yep. And now Texas Tech gonna have to try and find a way to hold serve on their end. Mack. Down seven at the point at this moment. This is Johnny Mack right at the goal line. 
Gets up to the 17 to the 18 yard line. It's time now for the fan rant brought to you by Kia Motors, which reminds you to make every mile count. What's up? I'm the mayor. We're out here in Raiderland and we're going to wreck them tech! You want some spirits, you come out here, you get some barbecue and you get some spirit. How about Mrs. Bates? Her son Trey plays for Texas, a backup offensive lineman. Well, she likes it. 21 14, 656 to play in the first half. Gumby, a couple of things. Looking. Goes to his safety valve up to the 20 to the 24 yard line. Bristol Olamua again. That is his fourth reception of the ball game. Once again, the Texas Tech receivers, they don't run true read routes, do they? No, a lot of teams, you know, they have their receivers read the coverage on the run and then run their routes accordingly, whether it's a cover two, a cover three, whatever it is. But for Texas Tech, they go with the play call. And they count on their quarterback to read the coverages, put them in the proper play call, run their routes, and then he finds them. That leads to a lot less miscommunication between receivers and quarterback in this system. Well, Johnny Mack is in the tailback spot for Texas Tech. They want to play both. They're more effective when they play both. Gumby plays, slips as he threw the football. His back foot went right from underneath him. Intended for Jared Hicks, and he knew he had Hicks open. I thought this lousy carpet was supposed to prevent that. Yeah. And I'm saying lousy, it's an editorial comment, because I played on this junk and hated every second of it. Yeah. Give me real grass any day. Can't stand it. Stuff just beats your body to heck. And you're not supposed to slip like that on this stuff. That's part of the selling point of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, Sonny looked like he had a little smile through the mouthpiece and when Hicks came over to him. Yeah, that's because he knows it. that's not going to happen yeah. to him very often. He's usually going to stand and deliver pretty accurately. Third down and five. Mack now wide to the left. Four wide receivers again. Texas showing blitz. Showing blitz, and now they're into it, and Sonny Cumbie's able to check it. Now they only rush four. Cumbie's pass over the middle. Nope, we had a stoppage of play. Hold everything, which is Boy. too bad because Trey Haverty had about 50 yards of daylight in front of him. And Sonny Cumbie a check to the proper play. Delay a game, number 15 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Just took a little bit too long, which, yeah. which means advantage Texas. Mm -hmm. By Greg Robinson able to shift around and move, got yep. Sonny Cumbie to start thinking a little bit more, took just a little bit more time to run the play, and that cost him. Boy, because he, he had gotten him into the right play. Oh, yeah. Now they're having to bring in Torian Henderson. It's a big third and ten here. Let's see what Greg Robinson decides to throw at them. Now Torian Henderson in, Mack out. He's in a lot of zone blitzing here. Cody Fuller in the slot. Nine to snap it, plenty of time on third and ten. Nine up. Here they come. Longhorns putting pressure on. Come be deep pass into the flat. Off the hands of Jared Hicks. Incomplete. The pass was there. The young freshman or sophomore, I should say, out of Houston should have had that football. Watch Jared Hicks, number 88, trying to get his head around, trying to keep his feet under him, trying to reach for the ball. Every now and then you short circuit a little bit yeah. with information processing overload. I think that's what happened to Jared Hicks on that play. Would have been a first down. Instead, Texas holds, forces a punt. This is big for the Texas defense. Only the second punt for Texas Tech. Alex Reyes' first one was 51 yards. And this time he's punting with a win. Aaron Ross back at his 40-yard line. Good snap, but this is low, not a good kick. Off the side of his foot, and Texas is going to get great field position in Texas Tech territory. So Reyes, who is averaging better than 42 yards a kick, doesn't get quite that much, only 27. The Longhorns lead and they have the football. They're down. They have the ability to come back from that, but no one likes being two scores down against a Texas offense is playing well tonight. Let's see if Texas just continues that run game. Nope, Vince Young's going to put it up. Looking deep over the middle, has a man incomplete. No penalty flag intended for Linus Smith. Threw it into double coverage. Yeah. That was probably the first, I would hate to hesitate to say bad pass that Vince Young's thrown tonight. Well, Lima Swede running the route, trying to isolate him against Khalid Nazir Udin, who did a great job covering Nazir Udin's 5'10", 180. 
Lima Swede, 6'5", 210. They thought they had the matchup they liked, but Nazir Udin did such a good job in coverage that he forced Swede to not run the route down the sideline, but to run it towards the middle of the field. That big gave him a chance to make a play on the ball. Good coverage. First incomplete pass by Young tonight. He's now five or six throwing the football. Second and ten. And he keeps it straight up the middle. It stood up at the 40 yard line. That'll bring up about third and five. Chad Johnson coming up from that strong safety spot. The sophomore out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Take a look here. Jonathan Scott in the highlight circle. He's a tackle. He's going to pull around. Watch him come. Boom, boom. And then he leads right here on Brock Stratton, 45. Excellent job getting inside and blocking, giving Vince Young an avenue. Young 14 of 94 rushing the football tonight. Third down and five. Benson straight ahead. First down, Texas. Inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line. Yeah, you know, we saw Jonathan Scott on that play. His dad Ray, of course, played in the NFL. He is 6'7, 3'10. That's not an easy pull for a guy that's not an easy pull, but he has terrific feet. His dad was a tight end, so he inherited the good feet from his father. And one thing he's that he's added to his repertoire, he's gotten to be more of a physical yeah. player. His dad says, well, you know, he joined a fraternity in the offseason. You know, Omega Sci Fi, the Q Dogs, he thinks that helped toughen him up. <laughs> And he is the best dressed on the team of 42. According himself. to him. <laughs> well, Vince Young puts it up in the air. The sidearm pass should have been intercepted by Brock Stratton. Right in the hands of the sophomore out of San Antonio, Texas, intended for David Thomas. And David Thomas ended up playing the best defensive back he's played. Watch him come into the flat. Coming at you now, three, level of three levels of receivers. Stratton had the interception, but Thomas ended up knocking it out of yeah. his hands. Watch this. See, Stratton's got it. Look at Thomas. Great job by David Thomas. Anytime you want to be an outside linebacker, son, they'll take you. <laughs> That's right. The defensive newcomer of the year last year in the Big 12. Second and 10 now for Texas. Benson, left side, maybe got one. John Salvi coming up to make the stop. Our first and 10 line is brought to you by Home Depot. Ron, how big a play. We may look back later yeah. and talk about how big a play that was that David Thomas mm -hmm. just made because that's an opportunity lost for the Texas Tech defense to turn the tide a little bit if Texas gets anything on this drive. Well, Texas is four or five on third down. They face third down and nine. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. The tight ends have been back into the lineup tonight for Texas in the pass game. Three to snap it. Young looking. Trying to set up a screen pass, incomplete, intended for Benson. And we have a penalty flag thrown after the play, well after the play. That play started to fall apart pretty quickly. And the reason that it fell apart here was number 97, Fred Threat. The defensive lineman reads the screen and is able to chase it down. Vince Young really had nowhere to go with the football and made an awkward pass at it. Well, here's Steve Juszczyk again. No oh, ineligible receiver. Ineligible player downfield on the offense. Number 52. The play declined. Fourth down. Well, the Texas coaches are saying that ball was tipped. Yeah. That was tough to tell, though. Tough to tell on that one. Lyle Sentence, if she has to be very happy, as guys have made a stand. Now Texas has to decide what they want to do. Field goal here. It would be a long one, and I think that's what they're going to go for. Well, they're going to mark it. On fourth down and nine at the uh, just about the 40 yard line. So this will be a 50 yard attempt. And they've got David Pino in, the junior out of Wichita Falls. His first field goal attempt of the year. Sailing to the right, trying to come back, and it won't get there. Ernie Johnson, what do you have coming up for? <laughs> All right, EJ. See you in a couple of minutes. How about that uh, Big 12 North, though? Missouri, Nebraska tied. Hey, Colorado, Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas. Nobody's out of it yet. You're not out of it yet. Two, we said before the season, we thought two losses would win the Big 12 yeah. North. Three may very well win it by the time it's all said and done. Well, 358 is an eternity for this Texas Tech offense. <laughs> they, don't, they don't need that much time. That's an understatement, isn't it? <laughs> and they throw it out of the flat. Pass is complete to Jared Hicks. 
gets out of bounds. His first reception of the night. He is the nation's leading receiver as far as yards. He is such a talented young man, just a sophomore out of Sharpston High School. Sonny Dykes was talking to us yesterday, the wide receiver coach, and of course, son of Spike Dykes, the legendary coach here, and he said, this young man is just getting better and better as he learns the game. And what's going to be difficult for him, and we did ask him about it, mm -hmm. is how's he handling the notoriety he's getting now as the top receiver in the country in terms of yards per catch and yards per game. And he said, well, you know, he's handling it pretty well, but he gives that little half grin, didn't he? Because oh, yeah. it's tough because you get everybody oh, patting yeah. you on the back now. People recognize you. That, that's an adjustment process for a young player. Well, Cody Campbell, number 64, the left guard, is hurt. Brian Keegans has checked in, the junior, out of Stephenville, Texas. Pickup of only two on that play. Texas showing blitz, and here they come. Company gets rid of it quickly to Haverty. He is run out of bounds as he gets up to the 40-yard line. Michael Griffin, fourth tackle of the night. Well, this telecast is a copyrighted presentation of Texas Tech University, a member of the Big 12 Conference. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Texas Tech University or the Big 12 Conference. Well, that was a win on that play for the Texas defense because they blitzed and forced him to throw short and still were able to make, a make the tackle after a short gain. And what this Tech offense does is it actually has taken number 11 out of the ball game, essentially, Absolutely. Derek Johnson. You have not called his name very often, Ron, and that's unusual for DJ. And the first uh, drive, third down and two, trying to outrun the Texas defense, and they're not able to do it. Not even able to get back to the line of scrimmage is Torian Henderson. He is shoved out of bounds at about the 37-yard line, a loss of about three on the play. Philip Giger coming up to make the stop. That was just flat out good defense stringing that play out by Texas. And it's very difficult to run laterally against Texas because they have the speed. There he is, number 11, D D Derek Johnson, a Lombardi Award finalist, a Buckus Award finalist, maybe the finest linebacker in the country. Well, fourth down, they're going for it. Well, that's Texas Tech for you. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you well, talk about, her, well, talk about Texas being conservative and taking the shackles off. Here we go with Texas Tech in their own territory. They're 8 of 19 this year on fourth down. Fourth and five. See if Texas goes after him. Here they come. It. Ah. And they're going to call the timeout. They just wanted to get him to jump. Nobody was doing it. Oh. Come on. Texas Tech. And they were fortunate. Because when you're in the shotgun, yeah. you can't run the freeze play that Texas runs from under center. That's right. Where you get a guy down. to jump and snap the ball and take the knee. If it's shotgun, you're snapping the ball, but the ball's in the air. Quarterback can't take a knee. You may not get a guy jumping in the neutral zone. Well, Sonny Cumbie will go over and talk it over with Mike Lee. Well, this week's installment of Home Depot building it to the wind, and it's blowing differently in each part of the field. Andreas, plenty of time, shanked his last kick, not this one. Fair catch is being called for at the 15-yard line. Make it the 16-yard line by Aaron Ross. 46 yards on the kick. Now Vince Young has been impressive tonight. He's had only one bad pass, but he's done it throwing and also running the football, Charles. And we were worried about his confidence in the passing game coming into tonight, but he started out his first, hitting his first five passes of the game. That's also allowed him to exercise his legs a little bit. A couple of rushing touchdowns, some big passes in the throwing game, and they've even thrown deep twice with it. Yeah. Once a completion to Tony Jeffrey, once an incompletion to Lima Swede. So we see this young man starting to develop a little bit more as, each, as this game continues to progress. Well, Texas Tech only burned off 53 seconds that last possession. So Texas now with 3.05. And they'll keep it on the ground, just banging ahead again. It is Cedric Benson. Already over 1,000 yards for the season tonight. Brock Stratton, his third tackle of the night. OU's the only game that Cedric Benson failed to crack the 100-yard mark. You know, we saw Midland Lee highlights of Cedric Benson. Great story. He called his high school coach, Coach Parchman, and said when he was being recruited by Texas, hey, we went to some lady's steakhouse tonight. <laughs> Who was it? Uh, Ruth's Chris? <laughs> yeah, yeah, some that's it. Some lady's steakhouse. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know how it is coming out of high school. Those yeah. guys don't have an opportunity to eat at places like that very often. Not a great Midland. experience for him. This time he tries to hop over a couple of tacklers, gets up to the 25-yard line, will be about half a yard short. And look at this. We talked earlier about he has that opportunity 
to be the first guy who's run for 1,000 yards in four successive seasons and actually improve his yardage each and every year. And based on the projections right now, he'll improve it in a big way. 1360 last year, projected at nearly 2,000 yards for this season. He'd be the first of the six to increase each and every year. The NCAA's leading rusher on third down and one. Ball at the 26-yard line. They give it to the fullback, and it's a first down. Will Matthews, the senior out of Austin Westwood High School, just barrels his way through. The man they call Headache. And Mac Brown likes this young man, Will Matthews, because he adds so much to this offense. And he's also Cedric Benson's best friend. Yeah, and they call him Headache because he gives them with his bleed blocking for Cedric Benson. And if something were to happen to Cedric Benson, heaven forbid, he would become the feature tailback. Yeah. They got that much confidence in him. Ran for 50 yards against Rice earlier this year. A terrific young man. Uh, Texas Tech with only two deep in the secondary. People were jumping around. Nope. One penalty flag gets thrown. This is a free play. Young. Plenty of daylight. Gets up to the 50-yard line and gets in Texas Tech territory. Down to the 46. The penalty will be against Texas Tech. I think it may come back, though, Ron, because I thought Cedric Benson jumped also well, in the backfield. So it depends on what the officials saw. I'll have to see. Well, Brock Stratton pleading in this case. Offside on the defense. Number 51. Penalties decline. First down. Yep. Deke Bake. You know. well, let's see Benson if he watch, moves. Watch Cedric. Oh, yeah. See, he's moving. Oh, and yeah. he's not moving laterally. See, he's not moving laterally. So then you get the jump up front. That's Deke Bake, 51, in the neutral zone. Everything turns into a scramble. And when things scramble and kind of get out of sync, that's where Vince Young's very dangerous. Well, Mike Smith called it out. And now saw it. Mike Leach is calling it out to the officials saying, you missed it. And they did. Texas benefits from that one. First down and 10 from the 47. Young looking. Zeroing in on his receiver. Pass is caught at the 40-yard line to Jeffrey. And he is run out of bounds, and the clock will stop with 51 seconds left. Ball will be placed at the 16. How about Tony Jeffrey? Watch number 12 coming across the field, right across the middle. Brock Stratton trying to locate him, doesn't find him in time. Vince Young delivers. Jeffrey gets down the sideline. Tony Jeffrey was the most experienced receiver coming back this year after they lost all those guys. Big game there was 31 yards for Tony Jeffrey. But he said he had to assume the leadership position. Yep. But he's had to be patient this year because of the passing game. He said, hey, everyone likes steak, but we'll take chicken too as long as we're winning, <laughs> right? First down and 10. Young keeps it. Dips inside, gets down to about the 11-yard line. Texas has two timeouts remaining here. They may be using one now. Big bake on the stop. Now Texas will have one timeout left with 44 seconds left. Now this was a heck of a game here a couple of years ago, right off and trying to score points. In this case, it may have hurt them. But how about the Texas offensive line on this drive? Oh, yeah. I mean, when you talk about, yeah, get some love to Jason Glenn, the center, number 52, Will Allen, Justin Blaylock, Casey Studder, and Jonathan Scott. They've really helped them advance the football downfield with their blocking up front. Second down and five. Young keeps it looking. Throws complete down to the 10 yard line. David Thomas is upended. Pretty good tackle by John Saldy. Yeah, he doesn't make that tackle. I think David Thomas gets to the end zone. Good open field play by Saldi. That'll set up a third down and five situation now from the 11-yard line. They've got to get down to about the six. Quick no huddle by Texas. Look at Lima Sweet at the top of the screen. He's their big, tall receiver. One timeout left. Young's looking for him. Young's throwing for him. And it is incomplete. Overthrown. Now you might bring out your field goal unit, and that's what Mac Brown's going to do. Well, you called it, partner. You saw him up there. Well, the reason you look at it, he's 6'5". Khalid Nazir-Udin's 5'10". He got the wide side of the field to work with essentially a one-on-one -on -one pattern. Ball's just a little bit overthrown. The ball's not overthrown. That's six for Texas. A good job by Greg Davis and Mac Brown recognizing and getting the proper play call. Alpino missed the 50-yarder earlier. Hope that young lady's okay, by the way. 
Now this one they're going to put it mark it at the will be a 27 yarder. Must be Mangum here right. Yep. Over his last three. But this one he drills through the uprights. So Dusty Mangum gets off the schneid a little bit there. With his fourth field goal of the year gets a little attaboy from Vince Young and Texas takes the 24 14 lead. Now college football on TBS continues next. It's true. Now McGee, this is McGee, probably just going to try to squib kick this. Only six seconds left. Texas Tech scored first, seven nothing. Then Texas came back, 14 unanswered points to go up 14-7. Then Tech tied them, and now the field goal, and that's where we are. A couple of touchdowns, then a field goal by Texas. Well, he's going deep with it. A little bit surprising. I thought yeah. like you, Matt, squib it. Don't want to give him a chance for a return. Now the time has run out. Matt gets over the 20 up to the 22-yard line, but that's the way the first half will come to an end. 38 points put on the board. They average about 80 between the two of them in the last couple of meetings. But the Texas Longhorns have done it on the ground and throwing the football, and their defense has been stout against one of the best offenses in the country. Here's Craig Sager with Mac Brown. Well, Coach, to us, Vince Young looks pretty confident in the rhythm. How does it look to you? Vince has had a great night so far, and we challenged our offense, Craig, because we didn't do very well two weeks ago. We didn't get done what we wanted to last week, except we won. And we know how good Texas Tech is on offense. So Vince is having a great night. He's got a lot of help with the offensive guys. Defense had two three and outs. Kicking game's done a good job, so we just got to keep working. And a 10-point lead. Well, and a 10-point lead, but they're averaging 70 at this place, so we can't let up. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Brian. All right, thanks, Greg. 24-14 is our halftime score, and that concludes the first half of college football on TBS, a part of Big PlayStation Saturday. And after the break, we'll send it to Ernie Johnson in our studios in Atlanta. All to begin the second half. They won the toss and deferred the kick. And the second half is underway. This time for the first time tonight, two goods kickoff will come out of the end zone. Eager is stacked up as he gets to the 19 yard line and that's where Texas will take over. Now we talked about Vince Young and what he has done both with his legs and with his arms. Here's how he did it. Got it done throwing the football and that gave them enough confidence to take a shot downfield. He connected with Tony Jeffrey for a big one. And then Vince Young also using his legs to get himself out of the pocket and hitting David Thomas with a short toss that led to a touchdown. Great first half for number 10, Vince Young. Well, a penalty against Texas Tech, and that does not help any. In that opening half, they had four penalties for 22 yards, and Mike Leach is getting it explained. And we talk about Vince Young. 112 yards passing, 121 yards rushing. He became only the, the only player in UT history to post two 100-yard passing, 100-yard rushing games in a career. That, that's amazing when you think about it. And he's just a sophomore. Just a sophomore. A redshirt sophomore who will continue to improve. You heard Mac Brown talk about that in the first half, that he's a work in progress. Pretty nice work tonight. Well, Texas goes back to working just straight ahead running with Cedric Benson. Craig Sager, what were the thoughts of Texas Tech? Well, Mike Leach told his defense, guys, it's nothing special. You just have to play better, whether it's the assignment, the technique. You must attack. You have to disrupt Vince Young somehow, get him out of this rhythm. As for his offense, he looked up, he said, guys, 14 points, a couple three and outs and punts. That is BS. Three and out is not in our vocabulary. Move the ball. Well, uh, you know, they talk about assignment, alignment, and technique and execution in Texas Tech, and now they need to do that. Right there they didn't with a missed tackle. Sounds like that's all Mike Leach was talking about, yeah. as reported by Craig Sager. You know, he said there's nothing special. Just do what we're supposed to do. Yep. Make the plays we're supposed to make. You make the point, partner. Assignment, alignment, technique, execution. Yep. That's what they talk to them about all the time. You know, Lyle Sentensich is one of the few defensive coordinators from Texas Tech, obviously, with no goal boards. He doesn't have any set any goals. He just wants his guys to play hard and play well as a team. Yeah, it seems a little unconventional, but it's always worked well. He's one of the best defensive coordinators in the country. From 10 straight ahead of running, just blasting over behind the big fellas in the front is Cedric Benson. 
And you talk about goal boards, just so everyone understands, most teams have a board that says, we want to make 70% of this type of play and 40% of that type of play and 100% of this type of play. Lausen says, says, forget the goal boards. Yeah. The object is to win the game, however we're going to have to do it. What he likes to see at the end of the game is a lot of tackles spread around through a number of people. He feels like if a few guys are making the tackles, they're not playing good team defense. A second down and three. They get a big chunk on first down, and that allows Vince Young just to tuck it. Looks for the sideline, gets it, gets the first down. And he comes up hobbling. <laughs> You know, Lyle Sentencic said at the uh, end of spring practice, yes, our defense has improved. Yes, we're getting better. But I'm really worried about a power rushing team against us. He wasn't sure if his defensive front four could actually put up with that. And the power rushing he expected to come from Cedric Benson, powering at them with the big offensive line, knocking holes in, in, in their defensive front. But what he also got was the big dash, a dollop <laughs> yeah. of Vince Young in the first half not only working inside but also getting to the perimeter he did a great job mixing where he would run the football against texas tech's defense right, first and ten for longhorn now benson right side gets to the line of scrimmage maybe gets about a half a yard on the play just barreling his way over mike smith the senior out of lubbock texas coronado high school just down the street with the stop mike smith probably the most physical linebacker that Lyle Sentence is his, his coach, and that's a pretty hefty statement when you consider everybody he has coached. Yeah, he's coached some pretty good ones along the way. He was at Arizona State. Mm -hmm. Coached a young man by the name of Tillman there. He was a pretty good player. He wasn't bad. You know, not bad at all. So, you know, that's, that's a big-time statement to say. And what he likes about Mike Smith is that he doesn't care where he plays. He just wants to play. Second and nine will run the option. The pitch back to Benson, looks for a block and gets it. He's got some running room to the 25 and tiptoes out at about the 21 yard line. The block by Will Matthews, as we mentioned, Cedric Benson's best friend and the guy they call Headache. Watch this block. Right here, Will Matthews is going to come out here and throw a great block. He's also going to get great blocking downfield on the corner. Check this out. Watch Matthews right there. Boom! Big time block. Takes Tony two Jeffrey, guys. also number 12, out on the corner, getting enough of the defender to give Cedric Benson a great lane to the sideline. Will took a couple of Red Raiders out, and that got the Texas offense pumped up, and now Texas Tech's defense wants to talk about it. Good timeout by the Red Raiders because they don't want to get down anymore. They already trailed by 10. Watch this block by Will Matthews on that last run by Cedric Benson. Coming at you, he's number 37 in white, coming right at you. So you think you want to be a player? Absorb this. Boom, on Chad Johnson, number 12, which knocked him right into Khalid Nazir Udin. And how about the stiff arm by Cedric Benson at the end of the play on number 46, Mike Smith, who's a pretty physical player himself. Benson with 92 yards rushing on 18 carries. And again, Texas undefeated when he rushes for 100 or more. First and 10. Benson just pulling his way down to the 16 yard line. Mike Smith is fifth stop of the night. Benson, the ball carrier, tackled by number and right now, you would think to yourself, see Jeff Madden, the strength coach, yeah. associate athletic director at University of Texas in charge of strength and conditioning. Somehow, I think he's got Olivia Newton Johns, let's get physical, oh. pumping in that weight room because these guys have gotten that way. Texas got bigger and stronger the last couple of years. They don't mind getting meeting people at the point of attack. And Cedric Benson is the big thumper in the I formation. Look at him. He's about seven yards deep. And he gets it deep there, and boom, he's ready to go. That 225 is coming in like a bowling ball. Second down and six. They tried Benson again. Stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Good play by Fred Threat, number 97. That is the best penetration we've seen in a while by that Texas Tech defensive line. Good point, because that's the way to stop a physical running game. You've got to get penetration and stop them before they really get started. What's the term everyone likes to use now? Mm -hmm. Running downhill. Right. Well, the field tilts about where the line of scrimmage is, one way or the other. Which way are you going to tilt it? Defensive line with penetration, offensive line going against them. That time the defensive line won. Well, the defensive line needs to win this because Texas has a third down and six. Young tucks it, dips inside, goes outside. Does he have the first down? Skips out right at the 10 yard line, and that's where he needed to get to. I think he got the good mark, too. I think he did. 
That's just single wing football, Ron. Oh, there, there was no question what football. he was going to do. And I played for Johnny Majors, who was a single wing tail back at Tennessee and finished second in the Heisman voting back in 1956. Nice dip by Young, allowing him to set up a block by Ben C. 32. And also on the corner, number two, Brian Carter, the wide receiver, giving him the angle to get the first down. All it was was a simple snap to the deep back, which mm -hmm. is the quarterback in this play, the tailback in old single wing, and he just ran for the corner. There you see what Texas has done as far as first down. Now they have first and goal right at the 10 yard line. Leading by 10, 10 50 to play in the third. Young will change the play. Benson gets hit right at the 10, leans forward down to the eight yard line, pick up a two. Benson Dow with 99 yards unofficially. Looking for his 21st game of 100 yard rushing. That would put him one behind Earl Campbell, who had career 22. Ricky Williams leads with 28. And of course, everybody has heard the much talked about story that when he was little, he wanted to be like Ricky Williams. Let's hope he's not like that now and just decides to pick up and quit football. Right down to the dreads peeking out of his helmet. Look at that 20 0 when they rush, when he rushes for over 100 yards. Second down and eight. Young pitches it back to Benson. Gets down to the seven yard line as he takes quite a shot. Naziru Dean, John Saldi coming up to make the stop. Good defense there by Texas Tech. They've seen the option a few times tonight. This time, you mentioned penetration by threat a couple of plays ago, the defensive lineman. We look at Lyle Setensich, the defensive coordinator in the booth. That time they got it because Khalid Naziru Dean, number 26, the corner, held the corner, didn't allow himself to be driven out of the play. That allowed Jay Saldi, number five, to come underneath the play and make a tackle against Cedric Benson. Texas coming into this game 10 for 10 on first and goal. Now they have third and goal from the seven. Guessing some type of run pass option here for Vince Young. He's looking to throw it, throws it into the flat, complete run out of bounds at the two yard line is the big tight end, David Thomas. He got in on one of those tonight. He could not stretch the ball over this time. It's going to be fourth and very short. And if I'm Mac Brown, you ready, partner? Yeah. I go for it here. Oh, why not? Because Texas Tech is a scoring machine. And you can never have enough points against them. Look at that. He tried to get there. Great wow. shot for guys. Almost got there. But if I'm Mac, I go ahead and try and get it right now because you can never have enough points against Texas Tech and you challenge the offensive line. How tough are you right now? Are you physical? Let's find out. Well, that was a very lenient spot. Looked like he was out of bounds when he reached the, uh, forward on that. They put it right on the goal line. Now the officials are stopping things. Making sure the ball's down. There you see how far he has to go. Fourth down from that point. And a good job by Texas kind of coming back together and grouping. So they come back to the line as a team. They need all the unity they can get on this play. Over the top is Young. Touchdown, Texas. His third rushing touchdown of the night for Vince Young. And the Longhorns have opened a 16-point lead. You know, normally I'm an advocate of getting low and following your line so that you don't get stood up and knocked back. But when you're Vince Young and you're 6'5", 225 pounds with great leaping ability, I'd say that option works pretty well. You use every bit of that frame as Dusty Mangamon to get the extra point. Perfect so far tonight and on the year. And the lead goes to 17. 9-14 to play in the first half. Texas makes good. They lead by 17 here in Loving. College football on TBS brought to you by Best Buy. Thousands of possibilities. Get yours. And Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, scooters, ATVs, and personal watercraft. Now the Longhorn Band, part of the 55,413 on hand tonight, the largest crowd in Texas Tech history. Vince Young, three rushing touchdowns, a career high. They lead now by 17 over the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. There's Max is going to take a knee about five yards deep. Well, Sonny Cumbie has led the comeback against TCU. He's led a lot of comebacks.
They've got the potential to make up 17 quickly. <laughs> it doesn't take them long. No, no. You know, it's been described in our parlance, in our own meetings, a little PlayStation-type football. Yeah. The way the Texas Tech goes at it. Four or five in the rece uh, receivers in the pattern. You never know where they're going to come from. They find the open zones, and you miss one tackle, and off they go. That's one thing you have to give Texas credit for tonight. Overall, they tackled pretty well in the secondary. And, you know, that, that's what Bill Callahan in Nebraska said. we got to be physical with these guys when we hit them. They weren't able to do it. Texas has been able to do that. Yeah, a little more effective here tonight. Now they rush three. Pass is tipped. Incomplete. Pass was tipped at Michael Huff, and we saw right there a classic example the pass is tipped, but then the receiver pays for it at the end. Yeah, and a great job there by Michael Huff, number seven, the strong safety at the top of the show. We talked about Huff, number seven, being able to go into the slot and cover. This time he's just sitting in the short zone because of playing zone defense as, a, as one of the nickel guys. He gets his hands on the ball, and then behind him, the big hit from Terrell Brown. That's second down and ten. Texas rushes for it, and Sonny Cumbie just throws it into the ground, and he had three white jerseys in his face, led by Michael Huff again. Great job by Texas getting right at him, trying to set up a screen, and now he throws it and grounds it into the ground as he takes the hit from Brian Roberts, Robinson, number 39. And now it's going to be a penalty, and I'm going to tell you what it is. It's grounding the football by Sonny Cumbie. That's my guess is that's what Steve Juszczyk is going to say. He's not a... You know, you know why? He wasn't outside the tackle. He wasn't he didn't get past the line of scrimmage. Exactly. You nailed it. He was not outside the, the tackle box, right? You got to be outside of here. He's not. Then the ball has to go past the line of scrimmage. Well, but he had Torian if, if Henderson right there. there. But he had Torian Henderson right there, and he was at his feet. I don't think it was. I don't think it was close uh, enough for Torian. I think that ball. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, the guy was hitting them too. I mean, you know, they take I that mean, in consideration. He did I exactly. Think Mike, Mike's told him to look at the play on the board. Well, he did exactly as he was taught as a quarterback. Yeah. On a screen, you grounded at their feet so that it can't be picked off. Let's take a look and see see here because you're usually right, partner. So let's see where Torian Henderson is when he grounds the football. But he's in the pocket, so it has to be. Now his head's turned, though. See, no. see where it is? Yeah. That's not close turned. enough no. in my estimation. You're right. His head was turned, too. It's a good call, I think, by the officials. Well, now Texas Tech, third down and 22. They need to get something going. How about Texas Tech? They scored 14 points, both on the ground. Yet to throw a touchdown pass. Now we have a penalty flag thrown at the 30-yard line. This is usually that substitution thing going on. Right. Either that or maybe it's something that was said on the sideline. I guess they called it on the sideline. I'm, I think I, I'm guessing it might be on Mike Leach still discussing it. Because this is the man who threw the flag. That's the field judge, Phil Warren. See how he kind of pointed at Mike, kind of, you see how he gave that hand to Mike Leach like that's Sonny, enough? Sonny Cumbie in there too. Right? You I know, think in baseball terms, it's rabbit ears. Yeah. <laughs> did you, know, did you yeah. see how he put the hand up? Like, oh, yeah. okay, I got you. And after that, they don't want to hear anymore. And there's the penalty situation for tonight. Seven against Tech for 51 yards. Mm, now they got their back to the wall, and you got to be careful. Texas rushing three. Cumbie, the little slip pass, nothing to him. Texas is right there to get Nehemiah Glover. Up end them at the five-yard line. Great defense by the Longhorns. Aaron Harris, the junior out of Mesquite High School, North Mesquite High School on the stop. Greg Robinson's troops, Yeoman's work tonight so far. And now we're seeing why Greg Robinson wants to keep number two, Aaron Harris, and number 11, Derek Johnson, on the field at all times. Why he prefers nickel as opposed to dime or quarter defense because those guys make plays. Aaron Harris came into this game, 32 tackles in his last two games, including 18 against Oklahoma in the Red River shootout. Great job by him diagnosing that and sniffing it out. Here comes the rush. Reyes is kicked, and I think they may have gotten a piece of it, and it's going to go out at about the 10-yard line. Alex Reyes took forever to try to get that ball off, and Michael Griffin got a piece of it. And when you're kicking from your own end zone, it behooves you to be a one-step kicker. Let's count Reyes. Catches it, takes his time, sets it. He's a one-step guy, one, two-step guy. 
That's why a lot of coaches like once there never touch the football. He just shanked yeah. it a second time. That's the second shank we've seen tonight from Alex Reyes. A lot of pressure this time from Griffin, but he never touched it. And this puts Texas Tech's defense in an awful spot. We want to thank Allstate for providing tonight's goalpost cam. You're in good hands with Allstate. So the penalties against Texas Tech pushed them back. Then they get the block, punt blocked. And now the Longhorns tried to up their lead. It's now at 17. Now the Longhorns are happy and for good reason. They're number eight in the country and they have a 17 point lead over Texas Tech. Texas Tech shooting themselves in the foot a couple of times here in quarter number three. And now the Longhorns first and 10 from the Texas Tech 11 yard line. I would have to think that Vince Young's going to tuck it. He's, he's in that shotgun formation zone play or maybe he tucks it and runs as he's done before. There it is. There it is. At the 10 at the five fourth touchdown for Vince Young. The much maligned Vince Young, who the last two weeks has been the subject of every article and every sports page in Texas. Put chance mocking have been the cry. Well, tonight this young man's proving his worth. Four rushing touchdowns, and he's actually thrown the ball well also. One of the best articles I read compared his development to Reggie McNeil's. Remember last year, Reggie McNeil yeah. at AM? They said, get him out and look at what he's doing this year for AM. They only have one loss. He's playing so much better. Watch the block by Cedric Benson, number 32 to your left. Leading him in the hole, gets the block on the linebacker right there. But that was Mike Smith, 46, and then downfield. Limas Swede, number four. Enough of a block on Khalid. Nazir Udin to help him get in right there. See that nice block by Benson. He's not just a ball carrier, ladies and gentlemen. He's a team player, and he gets his quarterback into the end zone. Vince Young, once again, people forget he's a sophomore. 11 and 2 as a starter, former National High School Player of the Year, the Big 12 Freshman of the Year last year. Getting a little help from his running mates back there, Cedric Benson. Yeah, the offensive line for Texas has played awfully well tonight. Chopping big holes in the front for all for both of their runners, Young and Benson. On that play, they did it yeah. again, and Benson led. One on one block, got plenty of got enough of Mike Smith. And really, you don't need much of Vince Young running no. behind you. Right? A lot of guys talk about how a great if it's a great back, all you need to do is breathe a little breath, bad breath on the guy in front of you, and he'll be gone. <laughs> There you go. That's it. Well, one thing Mike Leach teaches his team, do not look at the scoreboard. He's told us that for the last couple of years. Just play football, the points have come. And Texas Tech will take over. First and 10 from their own 20. Here's Ernie Johnson with an update on some. Thank you very much, Ernie. We've got a lot of laundry laying on the field here. A little, a little talking going on after that kickoff. A little frustration on the part of Texas Tech. <laughs> right now. No, I, I cite my old coach a lot, Coach Majors. Oh, yeah. But if he's listening right now, he's going to get a kick out of this one. You know why? Because we wait for Steve Juszczyk's call. Dead ball, personal foul, receiving team. Dead ball, personal foul, kicking team. They offset, first down. There's a word coach used to use a lot when teams kind of got out of sorts. Yeah. Discombobulated. <laughs> Charles, you're looking discombobulated out there in your coverage. Well, right now, Texas Tech is a little bit that way. Yeah. They've got to pull it back together, weather this storm a little bit, and trust their offense, which has worked so many times for them before. And that was a good call by the officials because both teams were at fault on that. This is Texas Tech's quarter, though. This is where they usually explode, but they only have 8 minutes and 14 seconds left, and they haven't put anything on it yet here in the third. Cumbie looking, throwing. Pass complete to Johnny Mack. The little water bug gets up to the 50. Fans wanted a late hit, and they should get it, and they do. Sags, what do you have for us on the sideline? Well, that's well, it was great so point. far. Yeah, great point. And now they're going to mark this one off against. Yeah, it looked like Larry Dibbles, yeah. number 92. Dead ball, personal foul, 62 of the offense. Dead oh. ball, personal foul. 92 of the defense. Uh, they offset second down. Well, I saw Dibbles coming over the top. I saw him at the end. Yeah. The 62 would be Brian Keggins, who's been playing. Remember, he came yep. in for Cody Campbell before, and he's kind of cross-trained to play guard and tackle. 
and they rotate him in and out of their offensive line. Let's take a look here at the end of the play. That's Kagan, 6-2 coming from behind. Right there. See that? He uh, hit he, Rod Wright, number yeah. 90, and he offset the play behind it and ended up taking away what would have been another 15 yards for his team. That company now has all day. No pressure at all. Throws out in the flat. Short hop to Hicks. It would have been a nice play oh, at Fenway yeah. Park. Yeah, it would have been. For Jared Hicks. That brings up a third down in one situation. Boy, Sonny Cumbie had all day, but you know that, that's sometimes you don't want to. I mean, you just want to be around there, you know, and just put a little pressure on the guy. You don't have to necessarily grab him all the time. Had all day, which meant the coverage wasn't bad downfield. But Sonny yeah. Cumbie had an open receiver, just unable to connect on that pass. Third down and one. Cumbie will go from the shotgun. Texas brings five. The quick look in pass, a little too high. Just off the hands of Jared Hicks. And it'll be a fourth down and one. If you're Mike Leach, you're down by a bundle right now. By 24, do you go for it? He went for it in the first half. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't now, especially the way that Alex Reyes has punted the ball tonight. Oh, yeah. Hasn't kicked it very well. I think he'd rather have it in the hands of his offense and rely on them than think that he's going to gain field position the way Reyes has punted the ball. Well, Trey Haberty's checked into the ball game. Fourth down and one. Hey, Tech has not looked settled in a while. That last pass by Cumby, high and wild, mm -hmm. not normally like him. Here comes the rush. Cumby has some time, dumps it off. They got the first down. Barely gets the first down. Their forward progress, they're going to mark it at the 31 yard line. Should be a first down. Yeah, Terrell Brown did a nice job, but they almost ran themselves right out of the first down. Nehemiah Glover he has a great tackle. Got just enough for the first down. They can exhale a little bit now on the Texas Tech sideline. New set of downs to start their offense over. Maybe that's what they needed. They get themselves mm -hmm. a little bit more settled and get back to playing more of Texas Tech style football. Well, Texas Tech averages about 14 points in the fourth quarter per game. They've got nothing to show for it so far tonight. First down and 10, however. Here comes the blitz. Cumby has a man crossing the middle, wide open. Down to the 50-yard line and the 48-yard line. Jared Hicks out of the reception. How about the offensive line for Texas Tech? Does he have time to throw the ball? Without a doubt, able to fully step into the throw. And because he had that much time, that allowed Jared Hicks to cross behind the coverage of Texas. Linebacker number 49, Eric Hall, he'd come out of a zone blitz into the middle, didn't get a deep enough drop. Come be able to drop it over his head and into the arms of Hicks. That's only his second reception on the night, but it's another first down for the Red Raiders. A little play action. Come be again with all day. Looking. Has a man on the left flat. Finally throws it out to him. And he pays for it. Mouthpiece is flying out. Brian Bishop gets hit. We have another flag down. That was terrific defense by Texas. It may be negated. Could be another face mask penalty as Texas went and pursued the football. Brian Bishop's first catch of the year for Jeter out of Coppell, Texas. Personal foul. Face mask. Number eight on the defense. Is that the, is that the third one tonight? Third one tonight, but great defense is totally negated. Right there. No, and there right, it right. is. Yeah, that's a, that's a good call by the officials. Has to be a personal foul one because number eight, Cedric Griffin, held on the whole time making the tackle. Unfortunate for Texas because they did everything right on that yeah. play except the end result. Mm -hmm. Good for Texas Tech. They continue to move the ball downfield. Now first and ten now on the 34-yard line. Plenty of time left in this football game. Only halfway through the third. Texas showing blitz. Here they come. Try to beat it with a run and nothing to it. Ryan Robinson is right there to stop Johnny Mack. And our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. A loss of two on the play. Second down and 12 now as the Home Depot first and ten line is inside the 25 yard line. You hear so often about defenses calling run blitzes. That yeah. wasn't a run blitz called by Greg Robinson. That was a blitz to try and get the passer, right. but they try and absorb the run along the way. And that time they did. 
You saw Greg Robinson trying to change the defense right as Texas Tech came up to the line. Gumby. Pass incomplete. Short hopped again intended for Bristol Olamua. Garnet Smith was on the coverage. Now that brings up a third down and 12. They just look yeah. out of sync, though, don't they? I they mean, do. It's, it's not what we've seen this year from them. And the biggest plays they've had on this drive have been a result of penalties against Texas. Yeah. So you look at Sonny Cumbie's numbers from the first half to the second, 50%, which isn't bad, but not getting much yardage for his throws. And he short hopped about two or three here in the second half. Three wide receivers now to the right on third down and 12. Texas with a bunch of white jerseys on the line. And here they come. The pressure. Cumbies throwing, looking for Pater. Has a man overthrown, incomplete, intended for Hicks. Hicks looked like he was getting a step on the defender. Yeah, he definitely had the position that he wanted. Mm -hmm. but, but you just mentioned them being out of sync. I've mentioned it. And when you're out of sync, sometimes when you have the play available, it's still not there because you're not in the groove. The rhythm of the night right now is on the Texas side. Texas Tech trying to find a way to get it back. Okay, we've had an Olivia Newton-John analogy, now a Gloria Estefan analogy. You're, I, you're rolling, bro. I just got the you're music. You're rolling, man. Music in me, baby. <laughs> Fourth down and 12. Gumby looking, looking from behind, gonna get hit. Nope, gets away, still on his feet, and he's gonna go down. Back at the 38-yard line, Franco Cam, the true freshman out of Dallas, Texas. Second sack of the year for him. This is a coverage sack, guys, because he had time. See? Nowhere to go with the football. Still nowhere to go with the football. Allowed Ocam, number 65, the freshman to go. Watch what's happening downfield. Is there anyone open? No. 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 Everyone's with the receivers. Great coverage, allowing the front line plenty of time to get there. Ocam, Rod Wright, helping clean up. Texas takes over. It didn't look like Texas Tech receivers were moving very well when Sonny Cumbie was in trouble. Texas goes back to running the football. They already have two 100-yard rushers tonight in Young and also Cedric Benson. First time since last year versus Nebraska they've been able to do that. Benson going over 1,000 tonight. 1,000 yards each of his first four years. Mike Leach's squad offensively, they got to get something going. They're going to be running out of time here. What we're seeing tonight, I think, is the Texas offense that they envisioned going mm -hmm. into the season. Yep. The balance between Vince Young and Cedric Benson and also Vince Young's ability to throw the ball. Craig Sager, what do you have? are paranoid they don't like their space invaded go at that defensive back put your number above your feet for balance then make your cut he says if they put their hands up knock them down make them uncomfortable attack them right. okay db tell us he's right we're extremely paranoid because there's a phrase that we use that was used all the time about invading your space or breaking down your cushion as a defensive back a wide receiver has always told us guys if we're even we're leaving they got even with you on the, running a route. They were past you. So, yes, we're very paranoid about our space being invaded. Thank you, Craig. Former Tennessee <laughs> defensive back talking right there. First and 10, Young Tucks. Keeps. Gets up over the 45-yard line, down about the 44-yard line. Seth Nishman on the stop. There are actually people leaving the stadium. Uh, this is kind of amazing. I'm watching, looking at the exit in the far side, and there's people actually streaming out. Texas leads by 24, but... And haven't they seen their team here at Texas Tech I, before? I guess not. <laughs> the way that they can put up points? They should They should take away their student ID <laughs> so you can't come back in here ever again. Got to support the team. And this is a time now for Texas's offensive line to really fire out and keep this running game going and take a little time off the clock. And they are. The clock is running, and they're going to keep it on the ground. Young. Flips the tackle, goes to the outside, gets down to the 31-yard line, and is ushered out of bounds by Vincent Meeks. Young is showing everything everybody thought he would be. Again, the zone run. Watch him fake it inside to Benson, and then watch the missed tackle coming right there. 46, Mike Smith. 
Doesn't normally miss those kind of tackles. He did there because Vince Young is so elusive. Then he gets outside before, as you said, he's taken over the sideline by Vincent Meeks. Right now, this is a fun time for Texas. Kind of a porterhouse night for the big guys up front because you know they're going to eat steak when they win. And this is they're going to get prime cuts. They keep blocking this way. Absolutely, and he has got 160 yards rushing the football tonight. Quite a performance. And they just give it off to the big guys. So if you're Benson banging his way, they are just methodically dissecting this Texas Tech defense. Getting it down to the 27-yard line. We are inside of three minutes. Boy, the Wild cannot do a whole lot. I mean, they're just being out physical at the front right now. You remember earlier in the game when we saw shots of Lyle Settensich, we see other people kind of in the shot, other yeah. coaches kind of near him. You notice as things get a little <laughs> worse, Everybody's he's by moving. himself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, guys are kind of moving away from my hey, you know. <laughs> hey, coach, what do you got? What do you got? Yeah. That's when it becomes lonely when you're the defensive coordinator. There you can see the line of scrimmage, the red line, the Home Depot yellow line. Second down and five. Benson just pulling his way out of the 22, carrying about three red jerseys in the process. Oh, Hannibal the Warrior. Oh, absolutely. Remember, Han remember Hannibal moving the troops, moving those elephants through the Alps? What was his catchphrase? We'll either find a way, men, or we'll make one. And look at Cedric Benson making his way through the initial tackle of Brock Stratton and moving the pile forward. Almost always moving it forward. It's rare that you trap Cedric Benson for a loss of yardage in the backfield. Well, Vince Young's career rushing high is 163 yards versus Nebraska. Look at that for tonight. Yeah. 286 minus 11. Wow. Third down and about a foot. Texas is going to get it. So uh, Vince Young is going after career high, just rushing the football and everything else tonight. And the clock now at 139. I don't think Mike Leach ever expected his offense to be shuttled as much as they have been tonight, especially after a week off. Yeah, no reason to think that they think that it would. Yeah. You know, this is where a lot of people are questioning, okay, is a week off good for you or bad for you at this juncture of the season because you're humming so well, sometimes it puts a little rust on it. I'm not sure that's been the problem. I think it's just been Texas' defense. It's back to Benson. He gets down to the 10-yard line, just lowering that shoulder again. Rivals.com is your football recruiting source. Who will be the stars of tomorrow? Check out Rivals.com and find out today. Right now, the stars of tonight are Vince Young and Cedric Benson, the Texas offensive line and the Texas defense. Yeah, and I think what we're seeing now, the benefits of a power running football team mm -hmm. are often seen in the second half yeah. as you continue to grind. Battle of attrition, right? As you're noticing now, Texas Tech's defense is getting tired. And Texas is ripping off bigger runs on most plays now. I mean, this drive has been a long one with 116 to play in the third. Young just keeps it. And he has finally stood up on first and goal from the 10 right at the line of scrimmage. And he may have a player down. Looks like Will Allen, the big right guard out of Cypress Falls High School in Houston. Came into the game a little banged up. There's a flag on the field also. Hope that Will's going to be all right. Have a different call on sportsmanlike conduct on a defense. Number five, half an inch to the goal. First down. Look like Will got like almost all like crap back block on him. See at the end of the play? Yeah. He had another one of his players hitting him. We've got unsportsmanlike conduct against Texas Tech. Couldn't come at a worse time for them. Let's check in with Ernie in our studio. People pay the money for the seats. At least they can sit down. <laughs> My goodness. Now, Vince Young tonight, as we see Will Allen being uh, hustled off the field, 289 yards total offense tonight. That's a career high. He has a bunch of career highs tonight. Yeah, it just keeps getting better, doesn't it? Well, instead of second down and goal from about the nine, it's first down and goal now from the four. And what Tech has to figure out is how to regain their composure. That's right. Because they've lost it at this point. They've got to get it back. They've got to go to Kansas State, who had the big win today, next week. Yeah, with, a, with the backup quarterback, Alan yeah. Webb, 
producing four touchdowns today for Bill Snyder's team. Georgia State crashing Nebraska. First down and goal from the four. Get it to your big guy. When they do, he gets down to the one yard line. And another penalty flag is thrown. Deep bake on the stop. You may end up seeing Steve Juszczyk go to both sidelines pretty soon or send an official to both sidelines to talk to the head coaches. And I think that should have been done in the first half, to be we'll honest with you. Talk about what's going on here. Dead ball, personal foul, number 51 on the offense, 15-yard penalty, second down. Well, Mike Garcia, the backup left guard. Just came in the game. Yeah. Not the way to make a good first impression. It's going to be a long Sunday morning for him when Mac Brown watches the films. Yeah, it could be a little reminder going oh, yeah. on, right? Our coach, my coach, he's called attention getters. I'll get your attention, son. Yep. Well, you know, coaches, we've <laughs> talked about this in the past, and our, you know, I remember Barry Switzer talking about it that even though they have a big win, they always found one or two things that they are just going to just knock you down on a Sunday morning. Exactly, and that's the time to really coach kids hard is after a big win because mm -hmm. you're trying to bring them back down to earth. Plus, they're a lot more receptive when they've won a ball game to criticism than they are after a loss. Usually after a loss, they're kind of gentler. After a win, you go at them pretty hard. Well, second down and goal now from the 18. 23 seconds left in the third quarter. It has been all Texas since midway through the second. Young looking to try to set up a screen pass. Bodies flying everywhere. He'll dance out of bounds back at the 23-yard line. Some of the boo birds are out wanting a foul not going to get it third down and 23 now third and goal I should say from the 23. It's good defense by Texas Tech sniffed out the screen pass Texas was trying to set up. Left Vince Young no avenue to even ground the football. He had to dance to the sideline but Texas has to be careful of is not going too far back and making yep. it a much tougher field goal attempt. Well now would be a 39 yarder if, it, uh, if they're unsuccessful here on third down and goal from the 23 yard line. Wouldn't be surprised to see quarterback draw quarterback run play here instead of throwing the football. Well, Vince Young looking to throw pass incomplete penalty flag is going to be interference. David Thomas got hooked up with one of the DBs. Looked like Vincent Meeks in the secondary. And that'll be interference. So now Texas gets another life. Obviously surprised me there. I thought they would try and just keep the ball on the ground there and set up for a field goal attempt. But I'm sure Matt Brown, Greg Davis know. They remember how much Texas Tech scores. Trying to get more points here. Pass interference on a defense. Number one. Spot foul. Automatic first down. But they had him, didn't they? They had him. This is Meeks back there in coverage. Let's see what happens with the head wrapping up with Thomas. Hooks him right there as they go to get their leg, got their legs tangled up going for the football. Tough one, but I think it's one that it is hard for an official to ignore and not call. Well, Mike just saw it on the video screen, and again he's going, "What are you talking about? They just got tangled up." Those video screens are, are brutal on officials. Yeah, aren't they? tough for an official, oh, but I think boy. the back judge there, Homer Jackson, I think he got it right. Now the pitch back to Benson. Looking for some type of running room. Gets inside the 10, down about the seven yard line. That should do it here in quarter number three. So the potent Texas Tech offense has been held in check here in the second half. Texas will go to the fourth and final. Stands a leading 38 to 14. Did nothing in quarter number three to up their lead to 38 to 14. 15 minutes left in Lubbock. Along with Charles Davis and Craig Sager, I'm Ron Thulin. It was the largest crowd in the history of Texas Tech football, but the Red Raider fans are very disappointed at this point. They scored the first seven of the ball game, but been tied it up at 14. But since then, it has been all Texas. You just think if Texas Tech makes the comeback, there will yeah. not have been a single person that left when they tell the story later, right? That's exactly <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> Look at that. And this is a Texas Tech offense that's averaging 420 or 514 a game. Texas looking for seven more, but at the five yard line, Benson is stood up. That'll bring up a third down and goal. Brock Stratton on the tackle. He has eight tackles tonight. 
I mean, you think about it. The Texas Tech offense, 200 plus yards. They are number 16, or I should say, number uh, two number in the country two. in total offense, and they haven't done anything. Amazing. That tells you what a great job that Greg Robinson and Dwayne Aquina, the co-defensive coordinators of Texas, have done in this ball game. Yesterday was Coach Aquina's 49th birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday, Coach. Coach is the secondary for the Longhorns. Texas Tech under 100 yards offense in the third quarter. This drive is now six minutes old for Texas. And Tech extended it with the pass interference. Vince Young, Young with four touchdowns rushing. Not going to run it this time. Throws it out instead. Intended for Thomas. That'll bring up a fourth down situation. And Texas will try to go up 41 to 14. Outside of 1999, the games have been in the high 30s, low 40s. And it's been pretty darn close, haven't yep. they? Well, this field goal, they're going to spot it right at the 12 yard line. It'll be a 22 yard field goal for Dusty Mangum. Who already passed Chris Stockton to take second place on the UT career kick scoring list. Trying to add his second field goal of the night. Good snap, good kick, sneaks inside that right upright. So Dusty Mangum gets the extra three. 14.07 left in the ball game. Texas Tech has a big uphill battle. The biggest comeback in Texas Tech history was versus Kansas earlier this year, 25 points. They need 27 now to tie Texas. They need to do it 14.07. Not impossible, but maybe a tad improbable. You have the right offensive system to try and get it done, but the way Texas is playing defense tonight makes it a very tough proposition. And Texas took 625 off the clock on that last drive. Wow. Side winding kick. Mack from the six yard line. Dips his head as he gets over the 25, up to about the 27 yard line. Well, earlier this week, we had a little smack going on between the two teams. Antonio Huffman talked about, I don't think Texas can beat us. <laughs> and that kind of got everybody riled up. And, uh, you know, the people at Texas Tech, when he started to come out of his mouth, it's one of those things they're going, no, no, no. Oh, why did you say that? Don't say that. And then there was an answer back from Vince Young, but the quarterback at Texas who, who said he. Well, another penalty. I never saw the flag. It's against Texas, and they're going to re-kick. Yeah, for offsides on the kickoff. And so Texas Tech's asked them to re-kick it from five yards deeper, hoping to get better field position on the return. Let me ask you this, though. Just play the devil's advocate. Why would Mike want to do that? Their field position wasn't all that bad, and you're going to have the clock run again. Yeah, he's hoping for a big play in special teams to try and rejuvenate his team. What, do, what, is, the, what is the flip side? What if something goes wrong receiving exactly. this kickoff? You know, the risk gamble reward. you take as a head coach. Yeah. Risk reward on yeah. this one. Plus, you're also going to run time off. That's exactly. And they don't have a kickoff return yet. You know, you're going to run off a little bit more time, and every second is precious right here. But Vince Young did answer the smack talk, saying they were going to run what? Lima sneak, Lima sweep yeah. at him. This is a small defensive back. And everybody in Texas was going, oh, no, why is Vince doing that? Because he's coming off of two straight bad games. <laughs> he must have known something, right? Be quiet. <laughs> he must have known something. It's worked well for him tonight. Well, McGee this time drills this one, and Texas Tech probably won't have good field position. Nope, they would have had a lot better. Might as well take a knee, son. Well, that cost him about eight, eight, nine yards. Well, here's what Texas has done against the top quarterbacks this year. Now, Jason White. Well, fairness to him, he didn't have to throw it a whole lot because Adrian Peterson was tearing up the Texas defense. Yeah, ran for 226 that night. Brad Smith last week, 237 total, but two key interceptions. And tonight against Sonny Cumbie, who came into the game leading the nation in pass offense, 227 passing yards, an interception he threw in the first half to Armand uh, Satchel. How about the game Jason White had today against Kansas? Yeah, they shut down Peterson and Jason White recaptured his old tricks, didn't he? Oh, yeah. I mean, the kid, the kid won the Heisman Trophy for a reason last year. <laughs> and they found out again today. Now Sonny Cumbie needs to go to work. Passes complete to Hicks up to the 40-yard line. And you saw the result there. And I'm not sure, Charles, as a DB, you probably saw it. When he caught it, 
he's starting to go in a little fetal position. He has seen some of the hits some of those wide receivers have taken. He's running right into the seam, and he, you know, he expected to get hit on that play, expected the contact to come. When it didn't come initially, he was a little uncertain yeah. and found himself a little bit of turf as Texas Tech goes with the hurry up offense here. Texas can't afford to lull themselves to sleep with this That's big right. lead now and just let Texas take Texas Tech take the ball right down the field on them. Hey, Sonny Cumbie's going to call. Nope, Texas is going to call a timeout. Now Mike Leach's squad trailing by 27. They have 13.45 to pull a miracle out here in Los Tech with the football. 13.45 to play. Down by a bundle, 27. They have it on their own 41-yard line. Sonny Cumbie and company trying to get something going here. Trying to pull the miracle out. Texas showing blitz again. They bring five. Pass tip caught. Getting back to the line of scrimmage. Eric Johnson looks like he got a piece of it. Or Johnny Mack coming up with the ball. That's the one second time that we've called Derek Johnson's name. Watch him right here. He's coming. Watch him go inside on the shuttle pass, on the shovel pass. He tips it and ends up tipping it to Nehemiah, Nehemiah Glover, Glover, who was trying to block him and didn't get him, and then came back and picked the ball out of the air. Fortunate play for Texas Tech. But Derek Johnson, one of the best, if not the best, linebacker in the country. I think he should win the buckets. Yeah, I, I, I'm agreeing with you at this point of the season. Cumbie's pass, almost a sensational catch by Cody Fuller at the 35-yard line. Boy, he talk about outstretched hands. This is what's called laying out or selling out to try and make the play. And unfortunately for him, Hits the ground and knocks it free before he's able to secure the catch. Good try. That Excellent takes, try. That takes the wind out of you, too. Fuller. Yes. Great effort. Well, third down and nine. Henderson and Mack down in the backfield, helping to protect. Sonny Cumbie. Texas with eight on the line of scrimmage. They bring five. Cumbie throwing. The, the receiver was being held up right at the 35 yard line. No flag. Hicks started to make a move. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that, Charles. And the key in college is is the ball in the air or not when this is happening? And they're both fighting with each other. Oh, it was I in think, the air. Yeah, ball's in the air. But I think what the official's going to say is you guys are chicken fighting with each other. I got nothing for you. Mm. I mean, when the receiver's pushing and the D-back's pushing at the yeah. same time, a lot of times the official goes, you guys, you guys fight it out. You let me know which one of you wants the penalty. Well, that's also the official, too. That may not give Texas Tech a very good break because he's going to feel the flag on Mike Leach. <laughs> Cumbie on fourth down. And that is it. He is going to be dropped on the play. Loper was being just shoved back and Texas will take over and that may end Texas Tech hopes and I think that's I think you made the right call there watch satchel 56 and then from the backside he rolls into Loper yeah but I'm not sure that that's what what caused it I yeah. thought it came from the other side and it, he got tangled up with his own guy and he, we're just lucky Daniel Loper is okay coming up coming out of that play was quarterback rolling on his back leg well he's not limping that's a good sign Strip the ball. Did you see Mike yes. Leach? Strip the ball. That's what they have to do right now. They've got to create turnovers. The Tech's off in life pointing out their assignments. They're going to hunker down and try to chop holes now for the running backs. Well, Cedric Benson, who's had some fumble problems the last couple of games. Hold on to the football. They both had some ball security issues coming in, but that has not been evident from either one tonight. I'll pick up a three for Benson, second and seven, 12 15 to play. We'll try it again. The Texas Tech defense trying to strip the ball. Toss it on the tackle. Well, Cedric Benson over another 100 yards. They'll make it 21 0 now for Texas when he goes over the century mark. Only Oklahoma stopped, stopped, I should say, held him under 100. And that's the only game, of course, they lost. Yeah, it, it, that's the one team, their nemesis right now, Bob Stoops, Oklahoma Sooners. But frankly, Bob Stoops, Oklahoma Sooners are everyone's nemesis. Absolutely. I don't see many people getting in line saying, yeah, let's take on Oklahoma. You know? <laughs> that's right. I don't hear too many people wanting to do that. Oh. 
Benson looking to throw into the flat passes caught at the 20 yard line. Bo Scaife on the reception. How gutty is that? You've got a 27 point lead. You want to milk the clock, but still you have some confidence you're going to throw the football. And part of the confidence is Vince Young and staying in the pocket and staying there and watch him. He gets a little bit of pressure. But see, look at his mechanics now. Footwork good. Stepped up. Boom. I thought he got more pressure on my initial look than what I saw there. Able to step into the throw and hit both scape right between the eight and the zero. 15 yard gain for the Longhorns. I had a 10 of 15 tonight for Vince Young throwing the football and he has a touchdown pass. Good pass distribution to the wide receivers getting in on the act. Supposedly the weakest link of the offense for Texas. Back to Benson. Puts his head down, down to the 15 yard line. Waiting for Vince Young to get another rushing touchdown. Right now, believe it or not, he's tied with Bobby Lane for touchdowns in a game with four. The Bobby Lane? The, by a quarterback. The Bobby Lane. Our first and 10 line is brought to you by Home Depot. How about that? You know, and people forget Bobby Lane. They talk about Vince Young not throwing uh, spirals and all this. Bobby <laughs> Lane threw a lot of wobbly passes. I don't know if he threw too many spirals. <laughs> well, that's probably because Bobby Lane spent a lot of time, you know, sing, sucking on that pearl beer. There you go. And seeing an eye to red and throwing a mend over in when he's with the Detroit Lions. But it didn't matter. That man was a flat out winner. Bobby. Well, Coach Parkman also made him do his math, too. Yes, he did. Kept him at the table to make sure he had the grades ready for when the colleges came came calling. And I got another one for you guys after this play about him and Coach Parkman. Bouncing down to the 10-yard line. Will Matthews this time, the big fullback out of Westwood High School in Austin. Dude, I imagine by now you guys have heard. You remember when Cedric was in high school, he came out of the game a little frustrated. Wasn't gaining his normal yardage. And said, came up to his coach, Coach Parchman, and said, you know, I can't do it by myself. He started to walk away, and all Coach Parchman said to him was, you know something, son? The great ones do. That, that's from Friday Night Lights. Come on. The great ones do. Man, we talked about this yeah, with Cedric, right. and I said, what kind of impression did it make? He said it was instant. Yeah. You know, really opened my eyes about what I should be doing out there. Well, third down and four. Let's see what Benson can do now from the 11-yard line. Just over 10 minutes left. A little reverse action to Tony Jeffrey. No, stepped out of bounds. Right at the four yard line. A little razzle and some dazzle. <laughs> but they called it Bob Cousy's time, a little hippa dippa. That's what it was. You know, this is one of those plays that you call putting it on film. What I mean by that is it's not necessary to run this play at this time for Texas. But you want it on film and force your force your future opponents to have to prepare for something That's like right. that. Make them spend practice time getting ready for it. Well, Texas will have to go out to Colorado next week. Who had that oh, very disappointing loss at Texas A&M? Gary Barnett's squad has been fighting hard this year. That's a tough place to play, though. The air is rare yep. and Boulder. On first down and goal from the four. Leaning forward, Cedric Benson. Seth Nitchman coming up to make the stop. Well, Texas has to hope that Oklahoma loses a couple of times, but they have Colorado, then they have Oklahoma State left on November 6, and that's going to be a great battle. It's going to be a big one right there. And we're Kansas talking, yeah. fighting hard this year. Mark Mangino's team. And then the and then big of one. Of course, that yeah. one right there. And that is at Austin this time. In Austin. Yes. Did you know you talked about Oklahoma losing twice? We know that's not likely. All Remember right. this here, Lubbock was the site that knocked Texas out of a BCS mm -hmm. Bowl a couple of years ago when they lost to the Texas Tech Red right. Raiders. So they still have a shot at another big time bowl. Second down and goal from the one. Benson looking for Pater and he scores. Now they just line up the big fellows on that left side. They give big Cedric Benson all 225 pounds of them the ball. So they go to the end zone and he does just that. Wow. That was impressive again. Three minutes and 30 seconds taken off the clock on an eight play 36 yard drive. And this one is going to be in the books. This is very surprising to a lot of us. That Texas could hang 48 and Texas Tech only 14. But Cedric Benson and the Longhorns.
They're going to keep their record perfect when he rushes for 100. Texas Tech to only put 14 points on the board. 9-15 to play. Number eight, Texas. 464 yards total offense. Texas Tech, how about 32 yards offense here in the second half? No way. You're I know. Kidding, right? They haven't had the ball that much either. This is Mack from two yards deep. He bounces to the outside, gets up to the 20 to the 23 yard line. Well, fans, it's time to vote for your T-Mobile player of the game. And to vote, all you have to do is pick up your phone and either punch in A, B, C, or D, which translates to Young, Benson, Cumbie, or Glover. I'm going to go on a limb and say it's between A and B, <laughs> and then send it to TBS. And <laughs> Don't go out there without a parachute now. <laughs> Ernie is sitting on the edge of his seat right now trying to figure out the results, and he'll have them for you a little bit later on. <laughs> I mean, you know, make sure make yeah. sure that you count 10 and pull your rip cord, okay? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. Well, Texas Tech, yeah, I will take over. I'll tell you what, we're still fighting, though. Making up 34 points, though, in nine minutes. Near impossible. Haverty, the catch. He pays for it at the 25-yard line. You know, we talked at the top of the show about Sonny Cumbie getting in a rhythm and confidence. I'm not so sure his confidence has been shaken tonight, but his receivers have been punished every time they've touched the football. Yeah, early in the game, they weren't getting to him. The receivers were making catches. Craig Sager talked about that, how they were catching it on the move, getting to the sidelines, making plays. But later on, remember that big hit on Nehemiah Glover oh, when yeah. he caught the ball? That kind of started things for Texas. And they started getting to be within one step of the receivers and putting a pop on them each time they caught the ball. And I think it's paid dividends tonight. Well, that's Hicks on the, the coverage. Now, Coach Robinson, Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator, has what he calls NOS, not our standards, which means if you don't do it, you're going to be doing some up-down drills and a lot of other drills in practice. They want everybody to go to the ball all the time. They call it tracking. Yes, and that not our standards applies to the whole team. Whoever gets it, means the whole team runs for it in terms of the defensive unit. Nice pass by Cumbie. Cumbie's pass is complete to Haverty. Breaks the tackle as he goes over the 40 down to the 37-yard line. Philip Giger on the stop. And that, I don't think, would be one of Greg Robinson's standards. Now, that, that might go as an NOS form and put it on the grade sheet just because of how free the receiver ran. But when we, we were talking about tracking, meaning each defensive play, Greg Robinson has the whistle in practice. Guys have to get to the ball in a per, in good hitting position, good tackling position, take the proper angles of pursuit. And once they do that, then he blows the whistle and says the play is over. If not, they continue to do it. And that's what he's talking about, tracking to the football at all times. That first and 10 from the 37. Gumby's pass complete down to the 27-yard line to Nehemiah Glover. Cedric Griffin on the stop. Let's check in with Craig Sager. Well, Ron, you know you guys are talking about the tracking. That is also something new for Mac Brown. Remember, for the past couple of years, as far as tackling was concerned, he had his own system. It was called fit, wrap, and strip. He wanted his would-be tacklers to size up the ball here, wrap the arms around him, then try to knock the ball away. But Greg Robinson, also Dick Tomey, who's the assistant head coach in charge of defensive ends, says, no, that's that's not the way we do it. We go after angles. We go after tracking. We go out after them everywhere we go. Now, that takes very good defense. It all takes a lot of team speed and trust in your teammates. And obviously, that's what Texas defense has. All right, Craig, and we had a pass interference penalty. See Jared Hicks, number 88, running inside Aaron Ross, number 31, and then coming over the top, Ross 31 got there too soon. Philip Geiger, number 22, giving support. Penalty should be on Ross. On a defense, number 31. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, yeah, it was on Ross. And got there just a little bit too soon. Good call by the officials as Hicks went up for it. Yeah, that'll put the ball down at the 11-yard line. See, Mac Brown, he has on a pullover now. Get a little chill in the air. Yeah. See, Greg Robinson still going polo. He's a defensive coach, though. So. <laughs> yeah, the defensive guys, they'll go out in the middle of a snowstorm trying to wear a polo to show they're not cold. Well, this is a guy that jogs six, seven miles every lunch hour. I'm impressed with him. If you do that in Austin, Texas at lunch hour in the summer, you are something else. <laughs> yeah, early. Buddy Gumby first and 10 from the 11-yard line. Touchdown, Texas Tech, and we have a penalty flag. Trey Haverty with a score. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, you got to know that Haverty must have said something, and Giger said, hey, look up at the scoreboard. <laughs> I mean, he pointed to it. It was pretty obvious what he was talking about. I think the flag would probably be interference against Giger. And with Haverty yeah. catching the football, they can put that flag back in their pockets because it should be a touchdown. That'll be Haverty's second touchdown reception. That's interference on a defense. His decline results in a touchdown. Another nice crossing route coming right into the middle of your screen, folks. Good delivery by Sonny Cumbie. Giger wrapped around Haverty, still made the catch and carried him into the end zone. Great job by Trey Haverty. Then after the play, there's a flag for that. Haverty, a little something for Giger. Now they want to discuss it. And Giger says, well, you did look at the scoreboard. We are still up big. And the extra point is good. Now well, Texas Tech scores with 7.23 to play, but they're still down by 27. 48-21 is our score. We are in the fourth. 48-21, number eight, Texas. Keeping their sights set on a possible BCS Bowl. BCS standings coming out this week, which totally confused all of us. I thought it was cleaned up, but there's still a lot of time left, as our good buddy Kevin Weiberg says. Too early to start dissecting it, but they still have a great shot at going to a BCS Bowl. Tell you what, if things keep playing out, it's going to be an interesting deal because oh, yeah. Ernie showed Utah winning again big tonight. They have two wins over BCS conference teams. One of them, Texas A&M, who's yep. rolling right now. The other, North Carolina, who beat a good North Carolina State team. Here comes the onside kick. They practice this a lot on Thursday, and it's loose. It's loose. Oh. Texas Tech had it, but they didn't turn around. Never saw it once it bounced off the Texas receiving team. Taylor comes up with it, but boy, oh boy, Texas Tech, if they'd have turned around, they would have had it. Boy, how fortunate is Texas right here. To the ball bounce. That's off the shoulder pad right there. That looks like, is that David Thomas? He's in on the hands team, the tight end? Yeah. He's very fortunate, Ramon's Taylor. Number 25, the freshman, dove on the football. Mm. Well, they got something else to talk about tomorrow. Yeah, it just gives Texas a little something extra to work on. Coaches actually like that when, once they realize they got the ball. Write it down. See, there's something else we can get them. That's right. That's <laughs> we can get right. on them after a big win, bring them down to earth. Well, the last two Texas drives have been six and a half in about four minutes. Cedric Benson on the carry. Just a reminder to stick around for the Dodge postgame report. Ernie Johnson will catch you up on all of today's action, including Mark Fine's postgame report from that great game between Colorado and AM, Big 12 highlights, and the infamous no huddle highlights, plus a preview of next week's Arizona State Cal game, which once again starts at 10 o'clock Eastern time. We go back about three hours next week. Clock is just going to run, and Texas is taking their time. They have 10 to snap it. Very disappointing game for the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Came in with high hopes, enthusiasm, part of the largest crowd in their history. Not to be tonight. Benson breaks into the secondary, gets the first down, down to the 32-yard line. Just straight ahead, assaulting that defensive front four of Texas Tech. But what about the patience that he showed as a runner? Mm -hmm. Get that little half stutter step in, waiting for his blocking angles to develop. And then once they did, and he saw the path, then he leapt into it. Now, a lot of times they talk about the great runners. Obviously, you have to use your legs to run the ball, but they say the best runners run with their eyes. They have the vision, and Cedric Benson has that. 477 total yards offense for this Texas team tonight. This is the most given up by this Texas Tech defense this year. Benson bounces to the outside, and he is ridden out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. I mean, Nebraska got under 300 yards offense against this Texas Tech defense. Oklahoma is the only one that got any kind of offense going against this Red Raider defense. But Texas has just crushed it today. You think it's about time for Cedric Benson to take a seat? I mean, they, they got a lot of season left. Yeah. You know, six minutes to go. As Vince Young's out of the ball game, Chance Mox in at quarterback. I would seriously consider yeah. having my meal ticket. Go ahead and get the ice packs going now. Well, he's got 168 yards rushing. And they're not. Yeah, I can't imagine they're worried about him setting any more records. No. I just. Matthews, the fullback, just I, down the 20. 
Oh, I take the chance. Yeah, I err on the side of caution with, with Cedric Benson. They already have Vince Young out of the game. I think it's time for him to go ahead and, and cash him in for the evening. I think that's me. He's headed over to the sidelines. He's done. Yeah, good idea. And I would first thing I do is take his helmet so he can't go and running back it. out that's there right. that's and right. hide it somewhere. So thank right. you, big fella. Well, Dick told me giving him a little attaboy on the sideline. All the coaching staff just did a great job for this Texas team this week. Brought his running mate, Will Matthews, out of the ball game also. To give him a chance to ice down and get ready for next week. The man they call headache. How about Will Matthews, though? What a great story. Here's a guy that had the lead role in Oklahoma. Yes. A fullback that sings and writes songs and plays guitar. Right, he played Curly, right? Yeah, he played Curly. 79 for the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. That's, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? You think that's maybe the most put-together Curly that's ever trod the boards? <laughs> most ripped Curly. Without yeah. a doubt. You wouldn't see Will Matthews playing Curly on Broadway, no. I don't think. Could you, could you imagine the costumer? Trying to get the trying to get the right outfit for Will Matthews, trying to get the overalls <laughs> that would stay on that he wouldn't just burst out of. But he comes from a very musical family. Yep. Mother's a singer, father's in a jazz band, had a sister who was a singer, writes his own music. And this may be this this may be like an NBA final five minutes. <laughs> Another penalty flag is thrown. And with the coaches, Get here we go. False start. 79 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Tony Hill's the true freshman out of Houston, Texas, jumping yeah. a little too quickly. And see, right now, this is when the reserves get their chance to play. And what the coaches are going to be all over them about is, hey, if I give you a chance to play, I don't care what the score is or what's happening, you need to play well. You need to That's execute. Right. Because if you think you're going to move up in the rotation or you think you're not getting enough playing time, and I turn on the film and you're playing in an actual game and you're sloppy, you don't make much there, of a case for him. There you go. See him? Back to Porter talking to him about it. I can't put you out there if you're going to do that, son. Moe Taylor, the freshman, bangs his way down to the 25-yard line. Mike Smith with his seventh tackle of the night. As we go inside a 415 to play. Do they steal his helmet? Yeah, he doesn't have his helmet, does he? Good idea. Take it. <laughs> helmet, pads, <laughs> whatever. Right now, trying to get him taken care of. Look at that cut. Oh, well, that's going to feel real good when you get in the shower. Oh, oh, that's a turf burn. He's getting a true turf burn tonight. But the tattoo stayed the same, though. Oh, man. Oh, this guy, watch this. This is going to be fun here. Let's see if he's a man. Trying a little sav on that, maybe a little new skin. Try and clean it out first. Oh. <laughs> You're bringing me back the memories of those turf burns, man. That Nothing. was good. Oh. Well, most Taylor is stacked up. <laughs> Lost about two yards on the play. Nishman and Rangel on the stop. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be bothering him a whole lot. I will say this, though. The screaming that you hear in the showers yeah. about turf burns is directly proportional to the score of the game that day. Yeah. If you lost, it's the moaning of the dead That's in the right. showers yeah, from right, turf right, burns. Right, yeah. If you won, ah, stings a little. Let's <laughs> move on. Well, if he'd have been a baseball player and that happened, he'd be out for four days. <laughs> He's a football player now. Yeah, Skip, you know I might have to sit today. Yeah, you got to sit today. Just can't take the pain here. <laughs> and we have 2.46 to play. And one to snap it. And a timeout's going to be called. Well, let's take a look at our pioneer play of the game. And it was early on in this game. Vince Young, a long pass complete to Tony Jeffrey. That showed the accuracy of Vince Young tonight. That's our pioneer play of the game. He's done a great job throwing the football tonight. Vince Young, 10 of 15, 142 yards throwing. A little bit better than he has done the last couple of games, Charles. Put it mildly, remember came, coming into the game, 11 of 32 throwing the football for just barely over 100 yards in his last two ball games. And then look at tonight, 10 of 15, 142 yards and a touchdown. 
really was accurate most of the evening too in the 25 carries 158 yards four touchdowns 300 total yards tonight for Vince Young. Well, Texas is going to try the field goal. Richmond McGee will line it up. It'll be spotted at the 34-yard line, a 44-yard attempt. And it's got the leg. Yes, it is good. Richmond McGee with a field goal. And they've added to the lead. 51 to 21. Texas leading Texas Tech. Richmond McGee with his first field goal of the year and Texas now leads 51 to 21 as they continue their streak of being undefeated when they outrush their opponent when Cedric Benson gets 100. That would make 54-0 under Mac Brown, right? That's right. 21-0 with Cedric Benson getting 100. Now, did Richmond McGee, you know it's going your way when you've used three field goal kickers in one night. Yeah. Two of them have been successful. And Richmond McGee, did I read this correctly? Has his own website? Who doesn't? <laughs> I guess I, I don't. I, I don't. <laughs> I guess I need to get one. I don't because I know no one wants to see anything I've got to say. <laughs> well, that was his first career field goal, too. Here's Johnny Mack. Dancing around. Gets up to the 30-yard line. Looking for some running room to the 37-yard line. With 2.33 to play in the ball game. And we have another penalty flag thrown. Little chippy play behind the action. A couple guys getting into it. Let's see what Steve Juszczyk and his officials come up with here. <laughs> yeah, Steve Juszczyk's arm from throwing flags today. He's going to have to ice it down. On a receiving team. We got a hold. <laughs> Number 41. We also have a dead ball. Personal foul on 41. It'll be take the hold first 10 yards, then an additional 15. Another personal foul. Sylvester Brinkley is the culprit. Let's take a look at the scores from around today. Kansas tied it up at 7 7, then Oklahoma just exploded. Iowa State, Dan McCarty, nice win over Baylor. Of course, that heartbreaker for Colorado and Oklahoma State. The last uh, few minutes defeating Missouri and Nebraska getting thumped by Kansas State. Bill Snyder. This is the updated standings. The North. Hey, roll the dice on that one. Yeah, that's a tough one because I think Missouri and Nebraska hook up next week, right? Yeah. At Nebraska. Yep. All right. So, so that's going to be a tough battle there, obviously. But if you're Missouri, that's one of those ones you're sitting at home. Yep. You got to you know, close out games. You got to win. You got to win. They're up 17 nothing in that ball game. And got beat today. Great job, of Oklahoma State coming back. Gumby going up top to Matt. The reception is made down to the 45 to 44 yard line. They got check that Nehemiah Glover. Well, that's the first time I think we've really seen him go over the top. And, and with with success, they've tried it yeah. a couple of times, but it's the first time really with a connection. And with Greg Robinson and Dwayne Aquina, the secondary coach, are going to ask their defensive backs. How did someone get behind us yeah. in a situation when you know they're going to want to throw the deep ball? 47 yards on the reception. That's what the zone defense is supposed to help prevent. And Texas Tech still battling with 215 to play. Cumbies pass to Haverty down to the 35 yard line and he spun around. Got Derry on the stop. The redshirt freshman out of Pearland, Texas, down around Houston Way. I think if you're Mike Leach right now, you just have to regroup. Get ready for next week. You still have the possibility of a bowl. Oh, without a doubt. They're in four and two. There. Yeah, four and three now. But they've got to go to Kansas State next week. Not easy. Humby's pass over the middle. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Cody Fuller. Fuller had that diving catch just a while ago. Got the wind knocked out of him. Seems to be okay. 138 to play in the ballgame. Now well, the rest of the way for Texas Tech, as Charles mentioned, they will be at Kansas State, then home to host Baylor. Then they have to go to A&M, and then they end up here November 27th against Oklahoma State. And that, that could be for a pretty good bowl. That could, that could be for a slot oh, in the yeah. Big 12. I think they probably will both be bowl eligible at that point. But that could be 
the right to go one place or another. You know, one of those types of games. All right. 138 to go. Cumbie out of the flat. Pass is complete. Glover bounces to the outside of the 20 down to the 18 yard line. With one and a half to play. Well, the score is 51 21, but it really, the tide, you have to, you just have to go back to when it was 358 to play. As another flag is thrown, 358 to play in the second quarter. When Texas Tech had the football, they only used 53 seconds. Mac Brown's team went right down the field. Another foul against Texas Tech. But you have to wonder just if they could have just run out some of the clock, how different it, it, it just might have been because Dusty Mangum hit that 27-yard uh, field goal just a little bit later. It's one of those times that you look back on as a fan and as a observer of the program, but you have to remember that that's the way they run offense. You know, it's kind of one of those ones you're going to have to live with it if yeah. you're a fan because of all the excitement you get from them in this offense, there are times when they won't run any clock, and tonight it bit them. Well, Cumbie looking in the flat deep. Pass is complete to Hicks. Down at the 25-yard line. So Griffin on the stop. And 24 to play. That should be good enough for a first down for Texas Tech. The penalty on the previous play had gone to, against Cody Fuller, blocking on the corner on the short route that Nehemiah Glover caught and it turned into a nice game. Mm -hmm. He got caught holding out on the corner. And that's why he got brought back. First and 10 from the 25. Hicks to the 20 to the 18 yard line. Good, 111 to play. It's a good piece of running by Hicks after the catch. You see Greg Robinson signaling in a horns defense. But the reason I say that, I thought he was going to get lit up on that play. When he caught it, yeah. he's, running, he's running into a lot of trouble, bounced off and spun forward. Good job. Well, coming again. Jumps it off the mat, spins around at the 13-yard line. That'll be another first down. The clock will stop with 48 seconds left. Well, you got to hand it to Sonny Cumbie and company. They're not, they're not just laying down on this. Now it goes back to the point you made earlier, Ron, that Texas Tech never looks at the scoreboard when they decide how to run offense. They just run their offense each and every time, and that's why they continue to do this late in the ball game, rather than saying, "All right, enough for today. Take a few knees and go home." Cumbie's pass in traffic incomplete. Tried to thread the needle. Danny Amendola, the young true freshman, coach's son. He's going to be a dandy. Remember that name. Very West Welkerish. Yeah, and that was cited by no less than Mike Leach himself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because that's almost blasphemy to give someone the West Welker tag until they've truly earned it. Mm -hmm. But they think they've seen enough out of Amendola that he deserves it. He's one tough young man. Plays full speed all the time. Inside the 10 down to the eight yard line. Nehemiah Glover. Well, I think Texas Tech may be calling a timeout. They did. They are with 29 seconds. They want to put something on the board. Yeah, they want to end the night with a good taste in their mouths because a lot of it has not been good for them. Well, the Texas. Mon Satchel dropping back and picking it off. The hitting we talked about. Cedric Griffin, then Michael Griffin. Tip ball there by Michael Huff, but the hit behind him by Terrell Brown. Good brush by Brian Robinson. Colorado.